in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed ezekiel 47 holy 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 and the people say holy 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 lord you are holy 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 and the people say holy 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 Lord, we say holy, 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 and the people say holy, 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 is the Lord, is the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord God of the way of the gate not words and led me about the way without unto the utter gate that looked eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side verse 3 and when the man that had a line in his hands went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and he says the waters were to my ankles verse 4 he says again after a season of proving after a season of dealing he saw a need to step up the grace and he said and again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters he says and the waters were to my knees verse 4 again we're not done Verse 4, please help us. Again, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through and the waters were to my loins. Verse 5. Afterwards, he measured a thousand and he said it was a river that I could not pass over. He says, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Let's read verse 9 verse 9 it says and it shall come to pass listen the implication of the encounter with that river it says it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which moveth whithersoever the river shall come it says shall leave then it says and there shall be a very great multitude of fish because these waters shall come hither for they shall be healed and everything shall live without the river coming that means it's, it's a river that will bring effect it will be so striking the bible says whenever the river comes to a region everything that is supposed to be alive that is dead that river has capacity to bring it back to life 
And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. 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 Hallelujah. The last one month has been a season of profound encounters for me profound encounters um, I cannot begin to describe to you the experiences that I've had in the last one month very profound and deep spiritual experiences please pay attention and the Lord began to show me so many things not just the prophetic word but direction for the body of Christ that will be able to bring alignment we thank god as a ministry for what he has used this ministry to do to influence the life of people across this nation we thank god for the testimonies but let me tell you something compared to what god is about to do what you have seen are just shadows in the name of jesus christ i want you to be a believer this year make up your mind to believe every word that comes from the mouth of god the bible says they had the word just like we did it says but the word did not profit them make up your mind that you will not argue with the word of god this year don't, don't sit down and be philosophical how shall these things be the river will just pass you by you've got to be determined this year and say lord every word that comes from you i will receive it and insist that it produces results in my life hallelujah god is a god that walks on earth with times and seasons and he has communicated to us as a family of faith that he intends to multiply the grace the anointing the access that he has given us and to give us influence grace talks of empowerment grace talks of access grace talks of ability grace talks of the anointing the very ability of God it's important for us to understand this the grace of God talks of his capacity his anointing his ability that force that compels results scripture lets us know that grace can be multiplied that grace is in measures listen please the bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you grace and peace be multiplied that means a man can grow in grace a ministry can grow in grace prophetically revealing to us in ezekiel 47 that he started with the river at the level of the ankle then to the knees then to the loins and then it was a river that covered the prophet and he says that river flowed to regions and every territory that river entered it began to cause changes it caused that which was dead to come alive i want you to know that grace can be multiplied Every level you have seen in God is only a shadow of the possibility that is in God. Are we together? Every level of grace you have seen. If you think you saw the power of God in 2015, watch what God does this year. If you think you saw miracles, signs and wonders. If you think you saw the dispensing of the word of God, watch what he does this year. Grace can multiply. Grace can multiply. And let me tell you something when grace multiplies it has a physical effect there is an evidence there's no such thing as grace multiplying and you are the only one who knows no when grace multiplies everything around you responds to the effect of that multiplication grace can multiply grace can multiply that's why you can see a man and track his life 
and know that grace has multiplied you can see a man of god and see the dispensing of the grace of god upon his life and you can study the track record of that growth you can know that a man started at this level but at this current level he's functioning at an altitude in the spirit that was not what he just like you can know that a man has backslidden you can know that a man was functioning at this dimension of grace but right now he is still functioning but you know that there has been a lack in the operation of the spirit grace and peace be multiplied the energy of god the ability of the spirit the power of the holy ghost that can be resident within a man compelling results he said it can multiply everything that is alive grows if the power of god is alive it can grow in a man hallelujah the healing anointing can multiply the wisdom of god can multiply the grace for finances can multiply access to deep realities in the spirit can multiply the eyes to see and the ears to hear can multiply and this is the season god intends to multiply everything every operation of the spirit you have seen hallelujah influence is the ability the ability to compel the ideology of a man the ideology of a people the ideology of a territory the ability to compel the ideology of a territory to bend towards a particular direction without using human force and cruelty is called influence if i'm able to do something to you that compels you to adjust to my paradigm of thinking that's an influence i like the 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 uh, um, the um, poster that was created by the media department you see that match the, the matches one having the fire and all he needs to do is go close enough he will compel all the rest to catch that fire we call that influence the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to institutionalize your ideology such that even those who do not agree with you will be compelled to walk in that reality this is what influence is the bible says it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and all kinds of people found themselves around those who didn't like him those who were critics those who were indifferent those who were passionately loyal for reasons they could not explain they found themselves the bible says he went up the mountain they still followed him that's influence listen the key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism as we know the key to kingdom advancement is influence the ability to bring a territory under like a spell you bring a territory under an understanding you compel people to think in a certain way you compel the economy of a territory to operate in a certain trajectory it's called influence did you know that there is a level of influence you can exert on a territory such that even those who do not believe in god will be forced to adopt certain languages in their english because that becomes the language of communication it's called influence once upon a time there were no networks in nigeria not one aside from nitel but a communications company came and marketed a proposal and right now it has become an addiction people literally cry when their phones get missing and they are on their way to go and do welcome back they, they have they have influenced you so much they created a package called welcome back in other words when you run away i create a provision to come under my spell now that's influence there are people in the village who cannot spell jesus but they know coca-cola 
influence every tribe in the world knows coca-cola the name is coca-cola no tribe calls anything by their own it's called coca-cola the three most influential names brands right in the world although it's been upgraded now number one is jesus number two michael jackson before he died number three coca-cola think about that right now the most influential brand in the world is google apple followed by google the kingdom of god will have to ascend in such a way and a manner that it will no longer just be one-on-one -on -one evangelism the territory forces people all roads must lead to the cross all roads no matter how people try to do it we come to a point where our thoughts become that which is aligned to the kingdom the songs become that which is aligned to the kingdom if they must crack any joke it must have a paradigm with the kingdom you won't do see the difference between the holy spirit and saddam hussein is this both of them try to exert influence but one brings his influence with physical threats are we together but the holy ghost reveals to you the excellency of his way are you getting the point now he shows you the all-surpassing superiority of working with him there is a level give us micah chapter 4 please one and two and then i begin to explain to us very quickly the things that the lord has put in my heart micah chapter 4 1 and 2 it's a scripture that speaks powerfully about the prophetic state of the church can we read it together one to read but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills it says and people shall what flow to it listen he never said they will call the people look at this he never said they will call the people something will happen upon that mountain that will force people literally it's a compelling power they will flow to it he says and how many nations please help me how many nations it says and many nations shall come and say come let us go where will the evangelism happen among themselves an ability will make them to start drawing themselves and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob he says and he will what teach us he will change our mindsets he will adjust our ideologies he says and we will walk in his path for the lord shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem this is what will happen let me tell you the church is not a weakling there is an energy and the ability of the ecclesia god's very church we will arise in a mighty way and shock creation the key is not to take the world i see a lot of people dreaming and say i'm going to take every world i tell them that's not how when god says you will take over the earth the key is to create a prototype of your agenda in a territory that's the key the kingdom always spreads like a seed there are people who have not done well where god where they are domiciled and they are thinking of no 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 the key is to plant a prototype of your ideology and that becomes the platform the template from which you will influence other territories you must jesus christ came to israel jerusalem created a prototype of his life and then compelled certain people called the sent ones and began to send them through regions so everywhere they went they were envoys of those ideologies backed up by the government that sent them this is the key to strategic kingdom advancement let me tell you something it's not just by traveling planting a church in london uk there's a time and a place for that but the greatest key to maximum influence is to be able to represent the ideology of a, of the christ so strategically in a region that every other region can look at it as a template that's how hillsong spread abroad they stood in australia and did something so striking 
this year zaria will be a place of pilgrimage i tell you you will see week after the same way you go to jerusalem write this down you will see people trooping in just waiting because it is the mountain of the lord the place where god has chosen to build his habitation it's an election of grace Are we together? Isaiah chapter 60. Let's start from verse 1, but my focus is 3. Isaiah 60. Arise, he says, shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people he says but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen listen listen let me tell you something don't ever let anything you read on the newspaper scare you this year god has shown me this year is a glorious year for the church write it down believe me i'm telling you it's it's not a it, it has never been a thing of confusion about the drop in oil price and all of these things this is something we said years ago and we're insulted for it but let me tell you you will see the glory of the church emerge see satan moves by ministering fear fear is a spirit are we together now and the bible tells us that as a man thinketh so he is and so the media while in a in, in a state of sincerity to address what they call the state of the nation have gone to market an ideology that makes people think oh this year i don't know about you but this year is a year for me of multiplied grace and influence the bible says when you see darkness start rejoicing is a sign there will be a separation this year like egypt and goshen that on one side there was darkness but then on another side they were not even aware of what was happening ah don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy he said when men say that means you are not men when men say there is a casting down those who have been altered by ability of the spirit will say there is a lifting up i refuse to make any declaration that is against the word of god no government no newspaper will deceive me into agreeing with the agenda of darkness for behold the darkness shall cover the earth listen it says and gross darkness the people but upon but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you oh hallelujah let's read verse 3 this is my scripture goodness it says and gentiles shall what stop he didn't say i will go and call them Makatala Bakosotaya. something will happen upon my life this year the wisdom of the spirit the multiplication of his grace he said it will compel gentiles they will come by themselves gentiles will come not to you to your light something you carry will compel attention it has nothing to do with whether they like you or not there is a level of prosperity you can enter there is a level of the anointing access to the dimensions of the spirit it will compel nations to come and then it gets better it says and their kings those that represent governments those that represent mountains it says their kings will come your light will start rising listen was it not in your bible when solomon's glory started rising every other person came but the queen of sheba refused to come she had her pride but that light was so bright the queen of sheba had to take gifts and come and say who is this solomon listen the bible says when she came to solomon she saw the arrangement of his table and saw everything she said half of what was told me he said i was not told half of what i'm seeing now he said when she saw everything there was no spirit in her 
It's God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's God's ability. It is God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Mm, we are believers in this place. We are believers in this place. Listen, this is the year you must take God seriously. When God speaks, he's not your lecturer. He's not suggesting. When God speaks, he's not your boss in office. When God speaks, he looks at himself first, whether he can defend what he's about to say, and then he will say it. He speaks on the strength of his might. Have you not read that God looked in heaven to find who was greater than him? Because he wanted to make a dangerous statement that he could not lie. So he was looking for a witness that was greater than him. And not finding any, he swore by himself. What is our expectation in this season? Some of these things I'm going to be reading out were the exact words of the Lord as it came to me. The Lord told me that in this season, he will be granting us supernatural access to the following. Please write. Supernatural access to number one, revelations. There will be a depth of revelation. We will break into a spiritual fountain of revelation. Hallelujah. And this is the scripture of the Lord in fact it was before the scripture came it was an impression upon my heart and the bible tells us remember in scripture listen please remember in scripture when the bible says two men at a place called emmaus they were walking and jesus was with them but they did not know he was the one that the word is near you does not mean you understand it that you are reading it they were with jesus the christ the living word the resurrected christ he was walking with them but they did not know he was the one listen many people just carry bible and think they are growing spiritually others think because they are looking at it they convince themselves that they are growing others have memory verses and crime verses which is not bad but they think because of it is a sign that they are growing and the bible says when they were at table he broke the bread and their eyes were open listen this is the year god will give us access to light light illumination illumination he says you will arise and shine for your light is come not because you are tired of sitting down there is a light that god will give you that will drive out certain darkness in your life forever forever he will give us access to anointings there are graces there are abilities of the spirit brothers and sisters please hear me there is nobody who is doing great things for god who does it by the strength of the flesh no no there is an anointing that is responsible for every result you see in the kingdom there is an anointing it's not about struggling there is a grace your own labor is to enter that dimension but once you are there you are there are we together there is a level of grace that god wants to multiply in your life not just please personalize this thing i'm taking out time to teach it because i want you to believe it you must believe that in my life there is a level of grace there is a level of the anointing the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference it doesn't make the difference the anointing is the difference a handkerchief with the anointing upon all of a sudden becomes supernatural a donkey with an anointing upon it all of a sudden becomes a prophet oh come on the anointing is 
never trivialize the anointing and the effect of it in your life there are doors only certain kinds of graces can open are we together we must believe God to multiply anointings in our lives God will give us access to people very important God will give us access to resources God will give us access to opportunities to the end that we will birth greater levels of salvation encounters transformation and revival he will supply all these things to the end that will be able to birth through the spirit greater levels of salvation greater levels of encounters greater levels of transformation greater levels of revivals there's an army rising up there's an army rising up in this very season there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain they will break every chain break every chain please write it down quickly there are five areas that i want us to focus on this year please listen five areas very quickly for us to maximize the prophetic word that the lord has given there are five areas that the lord would want us to focus and pay attention number one on our spiritual growth the first area of focus that you must contend in the spirit that there must be multiplication of grace is on your spiritual growth please listen this year there will be multiplied grace for notable spiritual progress are, are you listening to me that you can look by december and know that you 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 entered a dimension in the spirit there must be notable spiritual growth in your life this year please make sure you write it down god is releasing grace for notable spiritual growth You must increase your passion for God. I'm teaching you how to maximize the demands on your own path. You must, you must take advantage of this grace and increase your passion for God. Increase your passion for the things of God. And increase your passion for the house of God. This is not the year where you miss Koinonia anyhow for reasons say there was rain all oh, my clothes there was no iron to i no 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 there must be a desperation for god a desperation for the things of god a desperation for the house of god it was david that said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house have you read that scripture that he so passionately loved the house of god listen the foundation of the quality experience of the prophetic word of the lord this year is hinged upon your increased passion for god god told me something and i'm going to say it exactly as he said this is what he said he said tell my people to give me time and take me seriously i wrote it down tell my people to give me time god is asking for time this year listen because all you have in your life is time whoever you give your time to you have given your life to so don't say you have given your life to god and not give him time this is not the year of miserly time you 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 sleep for 10 hours use 10 hours watching films which is all right but this is the year you must invest in his presence invest in his presence like a business and see the returns that comes with you increase passion for god your passion must increase for spiritual activities prayer and fasting the study of the word 
this is not the year for laziness is God speaking to us your prayer life must jack back if 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 you know your prayer life is dying please don't let anybody deceive you there is trouble are we together if anything that attacks your prayer life in 2016 is the greatest attack from the kingdom of darkness men ought always to pray Luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint prayer is the place where people generate strength and capacity you can know when a man has the absence of prayer there is nothing that can replace the energy that prayer brings please give God time tell your neighbor give God time this year talk to him talk to him seriously give God time it's a strong admonition say give God time in 2016 don't be busy looking for money running around looking for money looking for job thank God for those things there is a place for them but brothers and sisters I call you to a place where you will hit the jackpot for this year invest in his presence the presence of God will give you what money will never give you I know we used to nod when I say but many of us don't believe it his presence prayer and fasting don't eat away your destiny this year prayer and fasting quality fasting done with revelation not compulsion to prove to people no 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 don't allow religion to destroy you this year but you must pray brothers and sisters maximize your night time i've taught you this thing it's just that many you see bar many of us don't take seriously the word of the lord that comes if you are obedient to the truth of god's word you'll be amazed to see the results in your life maximize your night times i have learned this is a mystery of tremendous spiritual power the bible says and the evening came and the morning he never mentioned morning before evening there is a mystery of the night time you are alone with worship even if it's for 30 minutes people are snoring around and you are praying lord i establish realities i command my morning i decree and declare it's my year of supernatural influence it's my year of multiplied grace and you are speaking and inspiration is coming and you are writing you soak yourself in worship you create like a spiritual magnetic field you get up in the morning and you are compelling things that people cannot understand do you not know that the morning is like a woman that has a womb go and read your bible it was a prophet that let us know that things can be planted in the womb of the morning it gives the morning the character of a woman and just like a man plants a seed in the womb of his wife and expects her to deliver the delivery time is your daytime the night is when you impregnate your day with prophecy and allow it to deliver to you realities many people let me tell you the engine room of real power is to pray your secret place especially night prayers and you walk in the morning and you encounter miracles and breakthroughs he told job has thou commanded thy morning not has thou commanded thy night hallelujah This year, you must invest in quality teaching and materials. Please. Get all the koinonia messages you can. Some of us pride ourselves around distributing koinonia messages to people, which is very good, but never listen to it ourselves. You carry it around and you are happy to be a, a, an, a, an evangelist. You are distributing it around. Ah, you mean you know Apostle? Ah, ah Apostle, I can't even call him now. You are busy marketing which is okay but you are dying don't forget the bible says let it not be that i haven't preached i myself god knows how many times i sit down and soak in koinonia messages i'm blasting in tongues and listening to them and where apostle joshua selman is prophesying i get down on my knees and i'm receiving it for my life please 
please take your destiny seriously there is a message for everything every major thing you are looking for you find out that the flesh is growing in you there is a message locate one flog yourself back to alignment you are dying spiritually find a message you are having one a get miracle service message and fast forward it to the place where prophecy started and see please engage the word this year tell your neighbor engage the word do it engage the word the same way you engage a man in a conversation put pressure on the word to produce results for you don't sit down and say oh, if god wants it to work i've been doing it no you are not work it work it work out your salvation with fear and trembling so your spiritual life i'm determined this year that my spiritual life will enter a dimension that has never been god has shown me the possibilities he can go with me if i'm if i'm interested and he asked me whether i'm interested what do you think my answer is my goodness lead me lord i will follow lead me lord i will go you have called me and i will answer lead me lord i will go god is calling us to a higher level never be satisfied with where you are are you hearing what i'm saying please write it down write it i refuse to be satisfied with where i am i know you've seen some results in your spiritual life you've seen the prophetic grace you've seen uh, an anointing you've seen some level of result but it's child's play compared to where god wants to take you if you are interested and you stay through with god he will surprise you this year james chapter 4 verse 8 says that when we draw near to him he says he will draw near to us when you draw near to him you must take that step with expectation the second area of focus this year for us to maximize this prophetic word is the area of mental transformation mental transformation romans chapter 12 verse 2 listen listen I've taught us again and again that the quality of a man's life is at the mercy of his ideology this year I want us to insist that we are going to lay aside every stumbling block we've held on to that is stopping us please those outside I hope we are listening can you shout hallelujah those outside praise the Lord make sure that you pay the price take advantage of the grace of God and contend for transformation the Bible says and be not conformed to this world the Greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age be not conformed it says refuse it reject it reject their way of talking reject their behavior reject their way of responding to life it's a choice he says be not conformed to this world then he says but be ye transformed right transformed how by the renewing of your mind that's what the bible says that we are transformed not by wishing by the renewing of our minds focus on sustaining a renewed and transformed mind focus don't say it's like that everybody in your family th that poverty mindset must die a natural death this year you must reject it let them hate you no problem reject it don't let people carry their failure and bring it upon you as an impartation don't let anybody tell you financial prosperity is not important don't let anybody tell you doing well in your life is not important you never replace one dimension of kingdom progress for another you can know god and still be poor are we together you can be praying in tongues and still be a bad husband there must be balance that's the true church that is shown to us in revelations 19. you can listen to my message the full gospel i've always frowned at the 
exaggeration of the body of Christ emphasizing one truth to the detriment of another so i'm teaching you on spiritual growth and forgetting the fact that you have children to feed you have school fees to pay no god is not that kind of god there must be a balance he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth no exaggeration that's the true church i will never be the preacher who will mislead you to emphasize one area of spiritual growth at the detriment of another you will get balance so that it is okay to serve god and be rich are we together it is okay to serve god and be a ceo and lead we keep preaching all these um religious messages in church that move people closer to god and draw them away from the world and then we become victims of the decisions of those who control these mountains but in this season we reject it we are going like daniels with the anointing of the spirit but we will still enter the system the great commission was go ye into the world not carry a truck to the streets that's all right but he said enter the system go ye into cosmos and influence it with an ideology that's the gospel but you can never rise above and beyond a transformed mind please believe me when i tell you your level of right, life right now is what your mindset has produced for you this is uncomfortably true you must believe it there is something about your understanding that is keeping you where you are from entitlement mentality that makes us believe it is government that should pay us right to those who believe that all they need to succeed in life is to get a job is that really true a job is wonderful i pray for you at the end of the service i'll pray for you but let me tell you a job cannot fund your assignment you know that right a job cannot build a house for you a job can only help you to barely survive exactly what satan wants barely survive so that you never hear god you never sow seeds you never give you are so busy making money you don't have time for the agenda of god i reject that kind of living in the name of jesus christ mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man oh god i'm i'm i'm, I'm strange to this kind of experience but god said the power of the highest that's how it will happen so don't sit down wondering will god really change my story will god really wipe my tears are you kidding you've forgotten the god who can change people he said by this time tomorrow listen i believe god oh i told you in this year make sure you insist on being a believer that i receive the word of god don't let the enemy come and steal the seed which is the word of god in january we can all believe Two weeks after now, you find a lot of people frowning at their convictions as though they were playing games in church. Mental transformation. You must lay down wrong and limiting ideologies. Lay them down. Ideologies that let you think that you cannot be a leader where you are ideologies that train you to do things that are not consistent with the ways of god is devilish and you must lay it down my father is wicked it's not only your father many fathers have been wicked but people triumph through that wickedness are we together nobody likes me you are not alone you are never alone you are plenty that people don't like you have to stop giving excuses tell your neighbor say stop giving excuses stop explaining why you should not move forward there are so many people they will explain to you if only i had space i had a room to myself my prayer life will be back now that you don't have what will you do with the one that is there you must create a strategy i would have fasted but the truth is the way my nutrition is i'm not even sure it's not like i have i understand the program it's just as it comes no those things are flimsy excuses take away those limiting mindsets i live a very supernatural life i don't see impossibility in my life and i don't say it just as a, a, a way of motivation i really do i don't see impossibilities in my life i'm only limited by the voice of the spirit
the bible said can two walk together except they be agree you and the holy spirit cannot walk together if you don't agree with him god is telling you this is what i open up before you are you willing and you say holy spirit is just because you didn't grow up in my family uh, hey. lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say lord everything that is resident in my mind that is not of you must give way please pray please pray for as he thinketh in his heart so he is please pray pray out every limiting belief oh i believe god for anything he can take me anywhere he can lift me from the dunghill this i believe he can crown me with honor and glory this i believe he can bring an anointing in my life i refuse to let my background limit me i refuse to let the awareness of where i come from and what has happened in my life limit me those outside are you praying lay your hands on your head i reject it every negative mindset tying down my life every negative mindset tying down my business every negative mindset tying down my education are you praying this is the year i call the devil a liar i reject him i reject him I reject that word it's a choice i choose to believe god i choose to believe god hallelujah don't ever sit back and allow the devil destroy you listen everything you see did not just happen by mistake it takes a man to see what others are not seeing to go where others will not go this is the year don't let people talk you down and lie to you it will take your faith you must believe believe in god and commit yourself don't be afraid of making mistakes are you hearing what i'm saying don't be afraid of making mistakes don't live in this this carefree world where everybody say take it easy and they kill you god is inspiring you to start up a business that can bail your family and people are saying take it easy you know the way nigeria is well please let me tell you something if you if you talk and live like them you will die like them are we together somebody looks at you as a student and says you are on 1.5 are you aware of that yet every time you sleep you see god doing great things in your life how shall these things be this is the year to believe and one way to believe is to run away from all those naysayers there are people who are negative by default they are your enemies this year make sure you run away from them intentionally you say why are you running away from us it's like you are running it's not like i am running i'm leaving you i intend to grow listen listen all this loyalty to people who will destroy your life we were childhood friends so what i intend to grow any man that is not seeing what i'm seeing should not be working with me are we together come let me use you for you say okay you are your cameraman come watch this turn all right move forward let's all move forward go go, go. Move forward look at this his forward is not my forward are we together we are all attempting to move forward it just so happens that for some reason he's unwilling to bend to my direction i'm not your enemy i'm just not going where you are going i'm not saying where you are going is wrong i'm just saying it's not my address are we together please this is the year you must sustain courage to look at people and say no 
I, I'm not a musician. I'm not against your music ministry. But God didn't call me to sing. Please, don't force me to do Riaza when I'm sleeping. I'm a businessman. I love your music. May God anoint you. I will encourage you. When I make the money, I will support your album. But for now, let me focus. Listen. Listen. I know we are laughing. You think I'm playing. This came out of the secret place. Days of intense fasting with full concentration. Not laughing around. It's amazing how many people never make it because of distraction. You're on your way going to do something. You are there singing. And God is saying, I already prepared people. See, when you are not in your assigned place, you will always feel secondary. You will fight everybody there and not find a space for yourself. You now get up and say, I'm into logistics. You want to be like Aaron. It's not working. Later you say, I think I like her. Look, settle down this year. Re-edit your mind and find where God has placed you and died there. Tell yourself, if it's to die, I will die there. Stop escorting men visionlessly. Even as a pastor, this is the year to know exactly what God told you. Your assignment is not the Great Commission. Are we together? The Great Commission is for everybody. Settle and find what is the grace, what anointing. God, what did you tell me? Oh, 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 oh. Sing it unto the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You must lay aside still on point two let's hurry up lay aside wrong behavioral traits we are still on that point two mental transformation first peter 2 verse 1 please give it to us quickly first peter 2 verse 1 anger envy pride bitterness dishonor all these traits that have kept you down this is the year you make up your mind i'm not gossiping about people because i found out everybody i'm gossiping about has moved forward and left me alone this year i want to move forward at least let somebody talk about me the bible says wherefore doing what laying aside laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and what evil speaking there are some people when you sit down close to them five minutes your spirit is down because they, they have what we call evil speakings always bad news always what someone said no you must change you must change anger you must lay it aside this year god open a door your anger closed it god open a door your anger closed it your husband was coming your anger drove him your wife was almost arriving your anger sent her away this year make up your mind that anger will not destroy my destiny there are people who do, you were at the verge of breakthroughs but this anger rage ha, that's how we are in our family I ask my mother we're all like that when we are angry just stay away please i want you to maximize this multiplied grace the one you had last year it has increased now so there's no excuse maximize the grace and say no to anger because it will destroy you envy envy you never do anything with your life you watch people have results and you are looking for what they do let me tell you something about envy it never affects the one who you are talking about or the one you are envious it's, it's such a frustrating venture it doesn't touch the bear even if it at least let it touch it it's better to fight directly fighting you sit down and tie yourself down and then the unfortunate thing is the bible says the part of the justice as a shining light so for how long will you hold it envy pride this year as a family of faith and as individuals we must run away from pride brothers and sisters pride is a killer are we together 
believing you can make it without God looking down on others pushing people down to show you are successful no lay it down bitterness there are people who just say I'm not happy why I say this world is a sad world hey you have a long journey a long journey to go say I'm just sad why is everywhere like this the place is moody and the devil says this is exactly what I'm looking for this year I choose to be joyful the Bible says, rejoice always it didn't say rejoice when you have money rejoice always and in case you forget again I say rejoice. number three the third area the Lord wants us to focus on is our health first Corinthians 6 verse 12 to 20 we don't have the time to read it our health the Bible tells you authoritatively that your body is the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ right everyone say it say my body is a temple of the holy spirit say one more time my body is the temple of the holy spirit listen it honors god for you to take care of your body are we together this year the way you punished your body in 2015 you have to rethink this year are we together it's very important you must live a healthy and a balanced life no laziness and no overstressing yourself that's the balance there are those who are sluggish and lazy spiritually it flows down intellectually it now culminates physically inertia for everything it takes you two days to do what five minutes can do laziness is still an insult to the body and then overstressing yourself hallelujah when you read about the wealth revival you will know that what killed the pioneer of the wealth revival was not necessarily any demonic attack he literally stretched himself to death no matter how busy you are i believe that if i'm not mistaken i probably will may be one of the busiest people among us here but you must still create time to rest you may not have quantity of time but you must have quality eat well god is faithful please eat well this year don't punish yourself you need to add one more ingredient that you just look and say if i add this no what if you don't add it and you die see you, you think intelligently this year please please we are at different levels but pay serious attention to your health when you really fall sick you will find out that all you have is time and your life are we together you can have all the money in this world if you play with your health MOG all the men of God here listen please find time to rest walk your life out but rest when you preach they will mourn you for seven days and people will continue preaching are we together i shared with you my story when the lord delivered me and showed me told me to look at the crucifix and for the first time i realized i did not die for the world no my name is not jesus my name is joshua selman the hebrew joshua means jehoshua yes jesus but i am not jesus of nazareth my father was not a carpenter and so I realized that I am an ambassador, not the Christ. So you must rest. One of the most comforting scriptures for me, because everything, once there's no scriptural backing, I don't believe it. He says, and God rested. Come on now. Not an angels, and God. Whether you call it sleeping, or season from work i know that at that period he didn't do anything do it he said let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus it's not just the mind to walk it's the mind to rest how many people go to hospitals today and doctors tell them honestly there's nothing wrong they say look i know what i'm the one feeling what is wrong they say there's nothing we've checked just rest and they go back and rest and they get up strong sleep is a mystery are you hearing what i'm saying sleep is a mystery god used it 
to do a lot of things you can still advance the kingdom even as you rest it was in adam's sleep that eve came it was in jacob's sleep that he had a dream it was in joseph's sleep that he had direction for where to run away with jesus sometimes after you have worshipped and run around sleep your way into the revelation that you wake up with and it will move you oh yes absolutely if jacob did not sleep he would never know that was the gate of heaven his senses were alive looking for breakthrough and sleep and he saw angels if sleep will give me an encounter i will sleep because i need it i need serious encounters this year if you don't see it when you are awake why don't you sleep it will rest well your personal hygiene that's all right your personal hygiene i won't talk much there i'm not a medical practitioner but i'm one who intends to live long listen listen take care of yourself and your personal hygiene please don't say it does not matter do not let the financial situation in your pocket reflect in your life and your body you live anyhow you wear clothes smelling sweat all around you don't care you just smell it and say is it too bad your neighbor smells and no no don't just laugh i have to say it i have the responsibility to say it i've told us about that bathing you do with three quarter bucket somebody as tall as me you run and enter and while you are talking in less than one your phone is ringing before it finishes ringing five or six times you are out <laughs> my brother you didn't bath I, I assure you you didn't bath if that's what you have been doing it must change your health food that has spoiled you are there eat he said you are, I can still warm it if it has spoiled let it go we are still going to have miracle services but I'm saying we can minimize casualties nothing <laughs> hallelujah number four number four please write number four the fourth area finances god wants us to focus and experience multiplied grace deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 9 it's our year of multiplied grace and influence and that even in the area of finances very quickly deuteronomy 29 verse 9 i'd like us to read everyone please one to read what's the condition he said keep keep therefore keep these words of this covenant and he said do them he didn't just say keep them in your jot and leave them there he said do them practice them in truth he says that you must prosper write the following to guide us through our finances number one set clear financial goals set clear financial goals this year and work with the holy spirit to achieve them i want to be rich is a mirage you you'll never get blessed that way I want to be rich will never get you rich listen there is a mystery about writing and clarity the bible says, write the vision then it says make it plain what is your financial target don't, don't write foolish childish things i need one bill no 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 start gradually faith is not stupidity start gradually write something that is able to take you from where you are to the next level don't say how will it come leave that that's not your business you get frustrated when you are thinking of how it will come the bible says just like you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how a child nor the way of the wind you don't know how the wind comes you don't know how a seed becomes bones in a child is that not a mystery that a woman carries a seed and within the space of nine months that seed becomes bones hard bones becomes teeth that can stay for for hundreds of years and not just disintegrate and leave that's a mystery he said that one leave it to god your job is to get the seed in the womb of the woman the remaining activity is god's work there are certain things about the equation of success you can never understand there is a mystery in it that is exclusive to the office of god 
trying to understand it will frustrate you brothers and sisters keep your own part and watch the miracle work out set clear financial goals what is your financial goal for this year as a ministry we have financial goals in my personal life i have financial goals you must set financial goals number two to experience that grace in your finances master the laws of favor and abundance master the laws that govern the release of favor and abundance favor is a law preachers have said favor happens anyhow is a lie is a lie favor it is the the dispensing of favor that happens automatically favor is initiated by exact spiritual laws that can be understood and reproduced it may take time see i'm human i know that it's not easy but i'm telling you if you master those laws you have built yourself out from this mess that is eating on the earth master the laws of favor you can get the teachings financial dominion part one to four and the wealthy place part one to four please make sure you get this teaching sit with them sit with them understand what god has said and then practice the laws do them he said now that you know these things he said happy are you when you do them you've got to do them you've got to do them the laws of tithing i want you to pay attention to four laws when it comes to giving this year your tithing please look up let me preach to you i want you to be determined this year that you are going to be faithful in tithing first and foremost because you love the lord and second because you want to activate the operation of the blessing in your life don't say i'm poor how much do i have how much do i give god that's your way out that's your way out never forget i already shared with us that your tithing is like a spiritual circumcision remember our teaching the wealthy place that your tithing is a spiritual circumcision that authorizes god to come and partner with you melchizedek the high priest received the tithe of abraham and did what he spoke the blessing over him and the bible says christ today is our melchizedek what was the office of melchizedek what was the function he received tithe and prophesied on the givers so jesus in that office of melchizedek receives your tithe and releases activates the blessing and i told you what the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit that attracts to your life people opportunities and resources that's the blessing it's like an electromagnetic field when it comes upon your life everyone that comes within that circumference is compelled to respond to you in another way it's like a charm when it is on you have you heard people call you and say i don't know god just put it in my mind to bless you listen nobody gets up and blesses another person just by default if you are waiting for that you are dreaming something must compel them it's an operation of god called the father of spirits i don't want to start there are loaded messages for this year i don't want to go ahead of myself praise the lord there is a very extensive curriculum that will stretch you this year until you step into that dimension of grace very very important the father of spirits god gave me the revelation remember i taught us in james i think 226 or so he says for as the body without the spirit anything you do just from the flesh realm without a spirit component cannot work that business without the spirit will die your family without the spirit will die he said for the body without the spirit is dead so you must pay attention to practicing these laws when people in the shrine want to kill a man how do they do it they leave the man snoring in his room and use some enchantments is that true they invoke the spirit of that man you see it in nigerian films right and he appears that man is sleeping he's not even aware they called forth his spirit and separated it from his body and the spirit appeared in the shrine and then they gave the spirit instruction from today become unfaithful are we together from today become poor it's a programming 
upon his spirit and then the spirit returns to the body and the helpless body gets up and becomes a slave to prophecy it was not aware of that's the same way god operates he's called the father of spirits he can summon any spirit and give them instructions on your behalf so men don't know why they are just thinking about you and they say the lord led me venga the lord led me to show you ten thousand another person said ten thousand people say you are lucky no you are not lucky there is a spiritual climate responsible for that result this year force yourself to get it i must step into that climate that compels men i returned into this city i think two days ago as i was stepping in not even many people knew that i i, I think aside from the protocol not many people knew that i was around as soon as i arrived it was like a force that started compelling people apostle sir are you around i have a little gift for you someone brought hamper someone brought this and i said this thing works it's not about announcing oh, 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 oh. on your head in one minute and prophesy and say i'm breaking the back of poverty this year please pray i sensed an anointing that's why i was telling us to pray lay your hands on your head and prophesy it's a year of multiplied grace multiplied grace influenced by the spirit access to uncommon resources those outside make sure you are praying i will wipe the tears of my family this year what they could not do i'm about to arise god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness light to shine out of obscurity hallelujah psalm 112 please very quickly psalm 112 psalm 112 four areas i want you to focus on under finances one is your tithing please be determined this year that you are going to be serious discipline yourself don't think it's a gimmick by men of god don't listen to those nonsense that newspapers carry around castigating men of god yes i know that there are people who are driven whose god is their belly but please the mere existence of error does not mean you throw the baby and the bad water together don't stand the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord he said praise ye the lord blessed is the man that fears the lord that delights greatly in his commands verse 2 let's hurry up media help us his seed shall be mighty that's influence upon the earth he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 i'd like you to read it and take it as a prophecy for your life one to go he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever wealth and riches wealth and riches wealth and riches wealth and riches shall be in his house like the ark of god came upon the house of Oben edom and he began to prosper within three months Oben edom's life changed just because the ark 
came upon his house. Your worship offerings don't come to the house of God empty handed. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you why many of us seem to be stranded in terms of having an offering to give or a worship offering. Because you are not a sower. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. If you say, oh God, please, I don't want to come to your house just like that. Believe me, God gives seed to the sower. But you think when you hold that money, you are coming to give a man of God to enrich the man. No, I've told you, any man that truly fears God does not live off the resources of his members. He lives off his obedience to kingdom principles. It's a terrible thing to depend on your members to bless you. You are tied to their mood swings. The day they are ready to bless you. No. Let me trust God for myself. And believe in him as Jehovah Jireh. Your seats of honor. I've shown you the mystery of sowing upwards. Look at me. When you sow downwards, you walk in divine health. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't sow downward to step into prosperity. You sow downwards to create a track record that will speak for you in the day of obscurity. But when you want to step into a level, you sow upwards. You must learn this. Don't sow carelessly. Don't just look around. You are not a habalist. Say, go and see beggars on the street and give five beggars money and your life will change. Please, we are not practicing shamanism. This is Christianity. Are we together? You must learn God's principles. Seeds of honor. Find people that carry graces and levels that you desire. So in, we call it sowing into an anointing. You are sowing into an anointing and it authorizes you to step into that possibility. Learn this. Learn this. Learn to sow into anointings that will lift you into that level. You must practice this consistently this year. finally kingdom building i call it kingdom investment bishop oyedepo used to shout this and say it with all his heart kenneth copeland would shout this again listen i'm telling you when you commit yourself to kingdom projects it will amaze you how god will step into your life how god will step into your life kingdom building is to find a need in the house of god and participate actively in meeting that need i want to encourage you this year that you must commit yourself find needs in the body of christ workers your departments someone can sit down and say ah koinonia needs a work clock three of us let's come together and buy for the house not joshua selman and you commit and God is watching you and you authorize increase in your life the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increases he said there is he that withholdeth more than his meat I want to ask you a question did the body of Christ benefit from your resources last year that, that may explain why you are where you are financially may God never give me any money that his house will not benefit in I say it again may it never come to me any money that comes into my life that the house of God cannot benefit in is a cost to me I'm sharing with you very deep secrets that can open your heavens there are times that people bring seeds all kinds of seeds and while I'm excited God says uh -uh, this seed is for the house of God quietly with Jesus joy not grudgingly saying God said you God is faithful was it yesterday or day before yesterday I was rejoicing someone sent the seed into my account I was smiling and the Lord told me internet transfer straight this ministry that ministry God you are faithful you won't destroy me if I die I die in your hands of course let your finances be so flexible like Dr. Mike Mudok who said that God can do business with you. I was discussing with a prof last year, one, one of our daddies in area A, and he spoke to me. He said, son, 
tell the lord you want to be his treasurer ah, that's that statement resonated in my head that man sat me down and started discussing with me his work with god from childhood and how god had been faithful in his life and in his old age he said ask the lord that he should make you his treasurer do you know what it means for god to make you his treasurer oh god make me your treasurer in 2016 can god trust you with heaven's resources do you have the flexibility to release it when he makes demands it's my own it's my money i worked for it it's my sweat no but thou shall remember the lord your god because you can forget thou shall remember the lord your god he said for it is he that giveth thee power please give your way out of poverty this year sow your way out of poverty this year Number five, this is the last one, and we'll pray. Relationships. I want you to pay attention to this, especially those outside. Please pay very close attention to what I'm saying. I want you to invest this year, invest in godly and healthy relationships. Do you know the reason why doors never open for many of us we don't have helpers in our lives there's nobody you have honored enough to remember you in the days of adversity there are people who don't have money but they never lack there is always someone they can cry to they are not somebody who remembers them in the days of pain listen money is not everything are you hearing what i'm saying believe me money is very important but money is not everything educate yourself enough to know that money does not do everything hallelujah went to the bank today with the protocol to collect my 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 atm my card had expired and i was going to collect it and one two one two I'm sure maybe one or two of them may even be here one two one two they just made things happen for us and within minutes we're out of that place the power of relationships relationships will give you what money cannot give you relationship will give you hectares of land that you don't have money to get are you hearing what i'm saying relationship will give you things there are people today who can stay in somebody's rented apartment and never pay because of relationship if you have to pay for everything in life is dangerous it will kill you relationships the key to relationship is honor and friendliness when you make people feel like idiots around you you will pay for it in the days to come are we together all that big man is him i'm a big man i'm this and that no you must learn to relate with people. hallelujah Ada is here many of you may not know him they were part of what aaron calls first second generation ENI. that's him there he came around this guy used to wash my clothes cook for me he did this almost every day that was his work oh. believe me when i tell you this it was marriage until he got married and he left do you think i'll ever forget him i would drop my last penny to see that he smiles it's called blessed by association how many of you remember that teaching he and i those days blessed by association i thought on the mystery on how people can enjoy the sweat of others because they have learned to connect the bible says god told abraham to go out he said and lot went with him just by going with abraham he was implicated be blessed it's called blessed by association who do you know today that can speak for you in high places don't say it does not matter I learned this from my dad my dad has mastered the art of keeping relationships he knows almost everybody somewhere if it's military there must be a soldier that is his friend police there must be somebody that's a powerful life they take you to police station there's somebody who can advocate for you not to leave you to die there you are going to the court there is somebody who can speak for you 
I pray for you. May God raise people this year that in any area there will be voices that will speak for you. Listen, we suffer needlessly in life because we have money but we do not have voices that speak for us. There's a business proposal. There are five of you having it. You have all the qualifications but you neglected relationships. Somebody you used to know who can now speak for you you are anointed but you ignored it because we pastors told you it's not important just pray and serve god no connect with people you don't connect with people because they are perfect connect with them now before it becomes every day makes it more expensive to connect connect and have a testimony that you drank gary together right and you will be able to partake of their bounty destiny help us you must look for these people and pray them into your life remember the bible talk, it talks to us about naman we talk a lot about naman but we forget the little maid who encouraged him you know it was a little slave girl she said there is a prophet please talk to the king to allow you she persuaded him and he went to elisha elisha said go and bath and he was angry he said are there no other beautiful pools and the lady begged him when she pleaded with him he went to bath and his destiny changed connect with people don't ignore people this year and say this one cannot speak english we are the committee of beautiful girls we are the committee of of those who have we want we are the handsome guys we are the ones who are this we are the ones who are intelligent we are the ones who work in banks we are the business moguls that spirit cast it out this year in the mighty name of jesus christ learn to connect with people you don't know who is who this world is a very small world very very small world i've gone to places and i've been amazed at people who i used to know and how they have been of tremendous help you go somewhere and you are supposed to struggle and go through certain things and they facilitate it for you when my international passport expired one of our he's a general he's a, a, a chairman board of, of trustees he went to you know just with his influence i mean this is a general now this man drove me in his car by himself with army uniform and i came up people thought i was a general son i was just smiling <laughs> oh this year may you hang on somebody's success and smile through it it mustn't always be your own you can smile your way through relationships and they say yes you are just a parasite no problem at least i'm moving forward and he went there when the woman saw the way he was running around he just told me sit down i was embarrassed frankly he was running around doing everything and um, within 30 minutes my passport was uh, was ready something they anyway follow the protocol life is in stages don't go and force people in passport office and they throw you out and jail you but the point is the woman looked at him and i prayed with her then i think it was last year or year before last we went to minister in uh, the nigerian immigration the, the immigration service in, in abuja their chapel we now went to minister there and after i was done i was greeting the people guess who i saw that madam she had been shifted there. i looked at her and i said ah, mommy how are you she was greeting me she said, oh i knew there was something about you and i connected i greeted her so well so that if my passport expires again <laughs> learn how to maintain relationships see listen please we are, we, are, we are praying now i'm teaching you secrets that will really put you on top there are people who don't have money but they will never cry you won't see their tears there is always somebody there is always somebody hallelujah what has been your outlook about relationships people in the world know how to keep this relationship have you seen somebody go to drink no money yet he goes to the beer parlor he will invite and wife that is it not this joint immediately he enters oh god lucky are you there now and sits down give him 10 minutes somebody he knows will come in and he say bros no deal no day and they just say abba serve him and he would drink and argue about football and argue about everything add pepper soup to it belts and go back home no money but he had a capital called relationships 
Hold the hands of your neighbor. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to say it again one more time. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. May your life never be such that you will go in the midst of people who you used to know but there is nobody to help you. May that never be your testimony in Jesus name. Please invest in healthy relationships. I'm telling you this. Invest in people are the conduits for miracles. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who can wipe your tears. It's amazing to see how close to are how close you are to your miracle if you can just know who leads you there learn how to walk and live with people that's the second point on that relationships hold on mike just pause i want everybody to listen to what i want to say learn how to live and walk with people the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly please you must learn how to live with people many of us are christians but we don't know how to live with people let me tell you what we want a friend is not somebody who is you are you hearing what i'm saying a friend may be somebody who has similar ideologies but it cannot be you there are many of us the only person who can relate with you is another you unfortunately it doesn't exist that you are a friend to people does not mean that they don't make mistakes it doesn't mean they are perfect in themselves there are many of us the lifespan of our friendship is three days you must fight with somebody and it's not necessarily an issue of demonic attack it's just wisdom you don't understand expect disappointment from friends i don't say expect it in a negative way i'm saying make room for it incorporate it as part expect betrayal expect anything and let it not surprise you when it happens God can bring the greatest gold in your life in an imperfect vessel. If you know how to look beyond the flaws of men, you will find treasures in them that will change your life. I don't like this lady. She's a jealous lady. But she's intelligent. And you need her intelligence. Why don't you ignore the jealousy? Are we together? I don't like this man. He's arrogant. But he's anointed. Why don't you quietly let him ignore the arrogance and open up your destiny and go i don't like this woman she's too pompous but she has access to those you need please learn how to work with people i've taught us here but let me repeat for those who have come the highest psychological need of any man this is the key to friendship the lord taught me this the highest psychological need of any man alive is the need to feel loved to feel valued and to feel appreciated never forget this leaders incorporate this as you work with people pastors incorporate this the extent to which comes Sam, the extent to which i make Sam feel loved and valued is the extent to which we become friends are we together that does not mean i cannot rebuke him that does not mean i cannot talk to him but that he knows fundamentally that even when i rebuke him i love him truly from my heart Thank you, Sam. Are we together? Learn to make people feel comfortable around you. Don't fight people for sustaining ideologies that are different from you. You are not a member of this church. So don't come near me. We are the group of this. No, we are not a member of this. Your belief is this. You are from which church? I don't believe in your pastor. Okay, believe in the person. Relationships. God taught me this. I have seen it in my life. There are few things I pay for in my life. I am telling you this. And it's not because I'm a man of God. There are few things. Those who walk close to me know. There are few things I pay for in this life. There is always somebody somewhere. And it's just a call away. Do you know how you can help people? Influence is all about connecting with people that gives you access to platforms. Platforms. 
there are places i minister today i never i never would be able to minister but on the strength of healthy relationships there are people god has brought into my life today who will die to see me do well i mean die they will give their lives literally to see me do well do you have such people in your life if you don't have it you are poor if you don't have it you are poor invest in god don't just be bragging around and making people feel bad and you are moving around and looking at, no 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 the person you reject today will rise up faster than you ever imagined and let me tell you something you can change the future but you cannot change history people have memories like elephants you do something wrong after 10 years they will haunt you they don't know whether you have been born again in that 10 years or you've rededicated your life to christ they just say and see this stupid girl i remember her inside is she not the one she's the one and you are coming you are born again you are even a pastor now or a pastor's wife but carelessness of the past will haunt you and you will have to start explaining yourself no i've changed i know i was bad before use the opportunity now little things like fighting over seats to insulting people gossiping about people god is watching your destiny too is watching you must make sure you are friends to people everywhere i go i try to make the people feel honored i greet them have you learned something tonight relationships you want to see multiplied grace let there be multiplied relationships godly relationships you have to honor people you get up in the morning you greet your roommates good morning don't get up and say see if not for condition i won't be in this state you are not my mate at all you are not even my younger brother see please leave all those things don't use age to intimidate anybody you get up you greet. and you when they greet you you reciprocate you don't sit down and say uh -huh. how are you good morning all this living your life to yourself i cook my food by myself i don't share with anybody i go to the market by myself you will leave destiny by yourself and that's when you will know how painful it is to ignore people you can have all the money but no access over three people called me today three people called me today to send names for jobs i don't need it three people i'm, I'm serious three people called me today and said ah there's there are some federal government jobs that are opening do you have a few people i said ah yes so i have people I said, okay this one will give you one slot this one hurry up and do this it's called influence it's called influence that's what politicians do one letter can wipe your tears this is how miracles happen i'm teaching you wisdom you see me dwelling on this point because many of us have ignored relationships ignored relationships there are certain people that come from other university campuses and other places they come here and i see them i mark their face sometimes when i go around their regions to minister as people are trying to see me I, I look at their face and i say i remember are you not the one that did this bought me what they say yes sir and i say no 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 let this guy come follow us to our hotel room access i see him looking at his friends i paid the price i came and now i have to go may god give you influence this year yeah. access to people quality people in the name of jesus christ yeah. hallelujah the name of jesus christ access to people what you are looking for is in the hand of somebody don't look for that thing look for a relationship with him you will have access to it does a wife a, a good husband and a good wife does the wife really have to say sorry do i have a share in your inheritance all she did was what he got married to her and he also partakes of it stop looking for people's money look for relationships that's why many of us never get blessed you come to a rich man and you are eyeing you just hear making a call say eh, okay transfer 15 add five to it and you're like ah we are in the right place don't allow that attitude to cheat you this year listen I do my possible best to build relationship with people above money i have met millionaires i have met billionaires god is my witness i've never opened my mouth to say give me one naira not because i may not need it you kill relationships unnecessarily 
when your motive is revealed to be wrong so pay the price it's not easy but as much as it's within your power focus on relationship not this there are people who come and meet a man of god they don't want relationship they just want anointing man of god i've heard of all the things you are doing and i need the same result and then they kneel down and raise one envelope they say i came with this as if I, you know you almost feel like telling them my brother please stand up and walk away because he would think something came upon him but nothing really happened it's not that sometimes when they disturb you you just do it so they will go but you and god know that nothing really happened relationship elijah had the sons of the prophet but elisha followed him and established a relationship finally how to walk in the prophetic world there are two laws i want you to never forget number one is the law of encounter it's changed my life i've taught us jeremiah 29 13 he says and ye will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart he says and ye shall seek me and find me is one powerful law that has worked in my life encounter is what birth transformation when you encounter god when you encounter a dimension of him it will speak in your life please respect the law of encounter press for his presence press for his presence press for his presence allow people to run around and move around but stay I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on you Lord I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on you seek God with all your heart this year be be addicted to his presence don't just do it as a koinonia thing I told you God said tell them to give me time when you give God time he will reveal his glory in your life number two the law of honor this is the key for impartation honor honor let me talk for two minutes on honor Hebrews 7 verse 7 says and without contradiction the lesser listen God has already designed his system the lesser is blessed of the greater every dimension you want to enter is somebody's current experience if you know how to honor your way you will honor your way cheaply into anointings honor is so powerful it can bring the harvest of somebody into your life hallelujah i'm a product of many anointings i have mastered the law of honor you must learn this learn this honor your way into unbelievable dimensions of grace honor your way into people's lives honor your way into their anointings honor the house of god the bible says honor all men it says honor the king when you have that attitude of honor i'm telling you the sky will only be a starting point for you this year i've made up my mind to honor every grace i come across genuinely and truthfully that's why we provide buses it's a symbol of honor we spend a lot there but we will never stop because it's a seed of honor i don't know what graces you carry it's a privilege to be a preacher but it does not mean i am better than you there are people carrying graces here that i probably am praying for when i'm able to honor you by helping out to take you to your destination it's a seed of honor that will bring impartation it's a big secret in this ministry you honor people first from your heart not just through money money is important but the the principal way of honor is to esteem a man and esteem the grace he carries truly both the person and the office he represents not just office the person and the office 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. There are many platforms that are available this year to bless us. The koinonia services are there. The school of ministry is there. The forms will be out immediately during the announcement. We will announce it right this night. The forms will be out. There are many platforms. Plunge into it. Don't be half-hearted. You will be cheated. If you are staying, plunge yourself and see what God does in your life. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Please participate in the prayer because there is a prophecy that I want to release on us. Lift up your voice and thank the Lord for this word. Supernatural grace. Multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. Lift your voice inside and outside. Bless the Lord Almighty. The God of the heavens and the earth. Bless Him. It's a good year for the body of Christ. It's a good year for the body of Christ. It's a good year for Koinonia. By the Spirit of the living God. Mando protocosco prete catele poco to presca de bala da bala da bala da bala da bala. Shekata prekata de poco ya da bala da bala. Hallelujah. Just three prayer points quickly. Prayer point number one. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive your word and I will run with it this year. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive your word as a believer. I receive your word. Shaka bakata la poko soto preach. Mande kala cross kada bread na kapari adabash. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, we receive your word. Shembre dos koto prakata balarabash. But I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. I am persuaded that He is able. He is able. Kapaka pros kata bana da bosh, reka tete koko shopros kopari ana ba, embre tos kote pras kata ba, leka tete tete pros koto bakari ana ba ana ba, embros koto shopres kete boko to ba, ke pros seke tete le ba soto bakari ana ba ana ba, embros tete le koto pres kini ba 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 ba. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, make me addicted to your presence this year. That I will seek you. I will seek your word. I will seek prayer. I will seek your presence. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, Lord, I seek you this year like never before like never before i seek you with all my heart all my might all my soul pray revival to my prayer life revival to my word study life give me encounter so called supernatural visitations this year dreams visions encounters with the power of the holy ghost that will take me to a new dimension in the spirit <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, this year will be a year of results. 
I must hold on to tangible evidences. Lift your voice. Results. This must be a year of results. Outside, are you praying? This must be a year of results. There must be proofs in my life. There must be evidences in my life. Miracles, signs, wonders, the demonstration of the power of God, the demonstration of the word of God in my life, in my ministry, pray, in my business, in my education in my family there must be results in 2016 there must be results in the name of jesus there must be results in the name of jesus there must be results in the name of Jesus. There must be results in the name of Jesus. There must be results. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see it. When men see there is a level of notable results you can argue all kinds of things but you can't argue results it says that they may glorify your father in heaven the last prayer point listen please i want you to pray this with all your heart father connect me to influential relationships this year just pray what i'm asking you to pray Lift your voice. Connect me to men of influence across different strata. Men who will allow me ride on their success. Men who will allow me ride on their anointings. Men who will allow me ride on their influence. Men who will endorse me. Pray. Shekete koto sekete. Oh, send thou help to Zion, O great one. In the name of Jesus, send thou help to your people. Supernatural connections that will give you in one day the labor of other people's lifetime. Men of influence in every mountain. Men of influence in the government men of influence in finance men of influence in the educational realm oh god that in every area raise men to stand for me raise men to speak for me raise men to advocate for me make my life easy this year pray make my life easy this year as I serve you, let there be ease in my life. I rise upon the influence of many. I rise upon the strength of quality relationships, on common access, on common doors, on common resources, on common encounters. hallelujah so many people sit down and continue to confess grace and believe that they have grace and yet their lives don't move 
doors remain short they remain mediocre they fail and they don't make progress they don't represent the purposes of God to the degree that God intends and after a while they begin to wonder themselves what is wrong with my idea the grace of God so we have defined grace I'm going to give you other definitions but I need to establish a few things the grace of God is not limited to access alone no and the grace of God is not entirely unmerited that is an incorrect communication the Bible does not teach that it is only give us this scripture first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 let me allow the Bible speaks for itself the Bible says but the God of all grace everybody say all grace, all grace. he never said the God of grace he said the God of all grace now suggests immediately that grace is dimensional the God of all grace just like all wisdom all grace means that it is dimensional is that true please sit down there are largely two dimensions of grace not the only ones but for our exegesis of scripture tonight there are two dimensions of grace listen carefully there is what we call in theology the saving grace the grace that saves are we together now there is the saving grace according to Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9 the grace that saves what is the character of this dimension of grace the the miracle that comes from that grace listen carefully the miracle that comes from that grace is not produced by the recipient the recipient is only a benefactor of that grace that miracle is called in theology the finished work of Christ are we together now so when we talk about the saving grace we are talking about the grace that is imparted upon the believer number one to help you believe the gospel and then it is that grace that is upon you when you do receive what we call the finished work of Christ the substitutionary sacrifice Jesus Christ did everything alone on the cross as far as the price for sin is concerned no man assisted him men assisted him to carry the cross but the entire spiritual journey the transaction spiritually speaking he did it alone are we together the Bible says it is not of works what works not just the, the works of the law number one that are unable to save you and then number two any effort to save yourself outside of what Jesus has done on the cross is vain and is futile this is doctrine from scripture we are saved on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ which he did alone his passion his death his burial his resurrection his ascension his enthronement was entirely done alone no human being sustains in himself the ability to save himself the mere fact that we did not create ourselves means that we are unable to save ourselves is that true only the creator sustains that ability to help his creation and jesus came as a representation of the love of the father please understand this i've taught you this here that the one of the major reasons why jesus came was as a representation of the love of the father to man and then creation he demonstrated the love of the father through his substitutionary sacrifice his death his burial and his resurrection so the saving grace is the grace that helps you to hear and believe that gospel if that grace is not upon you you will not believe that report you will hear it like many people hear it today and they harden their hearts and ignore it they say this is some christian nonsense 
But if that grace is upon you, then you are caught to the heart. That was the grace that came upon 3,000 men on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins. And then you shall receive this promise. For the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children. Those who are afar off, as many as the Lord will call. Saving grace. But there is another dimension of grace called the enabling grace. This grace does not get things done for you. It empowers you so that even though the effort is being exerted by you, but it is not in the strength of the flesh. Are we together now? Watch this. A classic example of enabling grace is this mic I am holding. Who is doing the speaking? Who is doing the amplifying? Can I amplify my voice? But is this speaking? The potential of this mic is when I am in partnership with it speaking. The assignment is to make what I have released and amplify it beyond my effort. Are you getting the point now? This is the dimension of grace the body of Christ does not understand. And so here's what we do. God, your grace is able to lift me. God, your grace is able to bring destiny helper. And God is saying, this is not how it works. The labor of the fool weary at every one of them. The grace that enables. This is what Apostle Peter was teaching. So when he says, the God of all grace, the grace that saves and the grace that empowers. If I lay hands on someone who is on a wheelchair and the person gets up from that wheelchair, I do not have that power, but there is an engracing by the Spirit. Is that true? That person would not stand up just in his house like that. He had to come to the house of God. He had to release his faith. And the man of God had to minister to him. As you are sitting like this, God wants to touch you. God wants to bless you. But you will be surprised. Even though he wants to touch you, he will keep quiet. As though he cannot do it. But he ministers to me now and I say the power of God is touching you. You begin to see it happen. It is not just when I started speaking that he wanted to do it. He's always wanted to do it. But if you do not know how the enabling grace works, you will keep waiting forever. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the Bible lets us know that it is all grace. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's hurry up please. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's read together. Let me show you what grace does when it is entire. Are we together? Ready? One, two, read. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he have suffered a while, number one, make you perfect. Number two, establish you. Number three, strengthen you. Number four, settle you. All grace. All grace. All grace. There is the grace that brings salvation. It is saving grace. But there is the grace that empowers the believer to walk in victory. For instance, the grace that comes upon your prayer life, granting you the capacity to pray and to be diligent in prayer. If you don't pray, even if the grace is on you, it will be unfruitful. Because the grace depends on your participatory contribution. Now, when you are praying, you are not neglecting what Christ has done. You are taking advantage of what he has done and you are making use of it. Are we together? Now, watch this, please. If you want to take tea, you bring your milk, you bring your whatever beverage you are going to use, sugar or honey, whatever it is. Now, most of those beverages have been made already. You don't need to make it. Is that true? It's already there. 
but who does the mixing as you mix it it becomes tea even if the tea was made for you you have to turn it into a cup and even if it's turning the cup for you you have to pick it even if it's picked for you you have to put it in your mouth even if it's put in your mouth you have to swallow it there must be if it must enter your system and profit you there must be a participatory role now listen the role that we play on account of what christ has done to make good what is finished in our life now in experience is what the bible calls faith faith the name given to the participatory role without faith the potential of god's grace can never be experienced The second error I would say respectfully that I may want to with every sense of respect correct in the body of Christ is the idea that the only thing you do because there are people who have agreed that you have something to do but the only thing people say to do is to repeat what God has said. Just repeat what God has said and it is done. It's not entirely true speaking is a fundamental law of faith that releases the grace of God but not the only thing if all you do is to keep saying I am blessed and I am lifted I go from glory to glory in truth you will not go down your speaking will allow the Holy Spirit come to honor what you have said you have you have said by showing you what else to do are you seeing now There are many people who do not know what to do over their finances. They just declare, I will never be poor. You are not lying, but you will be very limited. There are people who doors have refused to open for them and they just say, all I know is that I'm not going to remain down. You are right. The Bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise. But speaking is not the only thing. We didn't see Abraham speaking alone. The Bible tells us that Abraham is our portrait of how to maximize grace that comes from God through faith. Is that true? Isaiah 51, I think, from verse 1 and 2. Look unto Abraham your father, he says. Understudy Abraham. Verse 2 now. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means study Abraham's life. What happened to Abraham when God called him? There was a conversation between Abraham and God. So we see speaking. But that was not the only thing that made him a benefactor of the promise. We see obedience. We see the endurance of patience. Is that true? The God of all grace perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. Let's define grace. What is the grace of God? Number one, I wrote here and I want you to listen carefully to this definition before you write. I said here that the grace of God is a state of consciousness. The grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God but only accessed through the office of the Christ. This is grace. The first definition of grace is that it is a disposition of understanding. It is a consciousness of the limitless provisions the vastness of God's power the vastness of God's blessings all that makes God God is called grace grace is like a warehouse that contains the entire riches of heaven the entire riches that are contained in God that warehouse the consciousness of the existence of such a possibility is grace Listen, none of us here is struggling to breathe in and out. Do you know why? It is not only because your nose can take in air and bring out air. It is because there is a consciousness in you that there is a limitless abundance. The moment you are aware that the air here is limited, we are going to have bitterness, 
We are going to have jealousy. Everybody will try to protect his portion of air. If you bring your nose near someone's, someone's circumference of air, the person says, go away. Because there is an awareness of limitation. There has to be an awareness in the saints of the vastness of the riches of Christ. That the reason why God is lifting another is not why another is down. That everybody can equally excel and rise and thrive and God still remains full. Are we together now? If you have that understanding, please listen, you have to learn this. If you have that understanding of the vast riches the grace of God, a consciousness, a disposition of understanding that when it has to do with the healing power of God, he's unlimited. When it has to do with passion, supplying passion, just because God has given me a grace to love him, he can give another person and another person and another person. When you know this, the doctrine of superstar Christianity is unnecessary because the same Lord can be rich unto how many? Inasmuch as there is the election of grace, as we call it, but I'm telling you, everyone can press into the fullness of the dimensions of Christ. All of us seated here can prosper. All of us seated here can know God and love God with such passion. Every one of us here can be a custodian of a dimension of God's anointing. Every one of us can make advancement. And yet God is still saying who is left in as much as everyone has received. That our partaking of this does not deplete him. Please pay attention. It is because we understand the vastness of God's grace that we can give freely without withholding if you are not aware of this consciousness it will be difficult for you to give freely imagine if for every one naira or one dollar that goes out of your account ten naira comes will you be greedy confess but because you know that if I take ten naira it goes down. 100 naira. It goes down. Say, no, I've tried. That's gone down. I, I, won't, I won't do that to myself. But imagine if there is a system that makes it to continue multiplying. This is, this is why God is a giver. He gives because there is no depletion in his economy. You have to understand this. This is the revelation of grace that you must have. The all-surpassing riches of Christ. The Bible calls it spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But, now let me tell you this. There are many other kinds of spiritual blessings. But this one we are talking about. If it is the grace of God, you can never access it negating Christ. Jesus Christ is the only door that leads to receiving genuine grace. Are you seeing now? Because there are many people that try to rout the grace of God and they take Jesus out of the equation. No. The Bible says every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. The office of the Christ is the only office by which men can access genuine grace that comes from God. It's called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyone who truly desires that grace, you don't just reach for the grace ignoring Jesus. He is the door that leads to that grace. Are you seeing that now? Do you know why this is important? You'll be learning something I will share with you a bit, a bit after now. When people see the dexterity of this grace upon your life, chances are that they will bypass Jesus and yet want the grace. You have to be able to defend how this grace came. Because men will tell you, look, I don't love Jesus. I'm not interested in him. If he's wisdom, if he's this, pray for me. And you tell him, look, the administration of this grace demands that you must come through the door. The door means the authorized channel. If a, if a visitor follows the window and enters your house, he's in your house, but is he welcome? What do you call such a person? A thief. 
A thief is a visitor, but he's unwelcome and unneeded. If we do not understand the concept of grace accurately, many people will continue to boast in the flesh and Jesus will eventually be out of the picture. If it is genuine grace, you cannot take Jesus out of the picture. No, he remains at the epicenter of everything grace. Is God speaking to us? So the grace of God refer to the entire bank of God's riches and God's blessings. Salvation being the first but not the only. Salvation being the first but not the only. Let's attempt to list the rest. Mercy, deliverance, favor, speed. All these possibilities are captured in that bank called grace. Mercy is grace. Faith is grace. Deliverance is grace. Anointing is grace. Provided it came from God through Christ to you. The spiritual name is grace. Please, do, do, do we have this understanding now? Yes. So when we say it is the grace of God, you are right. How did you do this kind of thing? How did you build this? It is the grace of God. What you mean is that the possibilities that I'm enjoying came from this spiritual reservoir. It came through Christ to me. And now I am enjoying it. The grace of God. The second definition of grace, very quickly. The second definition of grace, which is equally useful for our teaching tonight, is the empowerment. The spiritual empowerment or enablement. Write it down, please. The spiritual empowerment or the enablement that results from this consciousness. What consciousness? The consciousness that God is infinitely limitless. The consciousness that everything I ever need for life and godliness is in Christ. When you have that consciousness that God is a giver and that this God and this kingdom that we so talk and boast about is a compendium of infinite possibilities. When you understand this, there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness. The name of that empowerment and that enablement is called grace. Hmm. So if I believe that in Christ healing is possible there is an empowerment that comes based on that consciousness are we together if i believe that it is true god prospers there is an empowerment the assignment of that empowerment is to bring you into the experience of what you have believed listen carefully the assignment of that empowerment that we call grace grace as an enablement grace as help Grace as empowerment has the assignment to bring you into the experience of the things you have believed. So if I believe that God is a lifter, is it true from scripture? Yes. Has he lifted people from scripture? Yes. By having that consciousness that God is a lifter, the grace for lifting comes to my life in honor it comes to honor the fact that I believe that dimension of God. And let me tell you this. When that empowerment comes, because grace can teach, it begins to open me up to the participatory dynamics that make for lifting. So I find myself operating at a frequency of wisdom that mere human beings would not be able to have. The wisdom emanates from that empowerment. If I believe that God can make ordinary men powerful. I believe that because it is true from scripture. That grace, that anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I'm able to prove it here and now with my life that God empowers people. So I can speak to someone and say by tomorrow, return lifted and the person just leaves believing that it was just a word that came on him. And by the next day, that word that came on him will start drawing destiny helpers, will start making him act in a certain way until prophecy comes to pass. It's called the enabling grace. Are we together now? If I pray for you 
and I say in the name of Jesus, the prophetic or apostolic or pastoral calling upon your life, let it be fanned to flames. If you believe what I have said, the grace that empowers you will come on you. It is that grace that will start planting an appetite for prayer. Because in any case, without prayer, you will not grow. In any case, without word study, you will not grow. But the empowerment to do it does not come from you. The will to do it and the discipline to do it comes from you. But the empowerment to do six hours, three hours is not your strength. Are we learning? So, look up. It is true that the grace of God looks like you are not doing anything. But that is not entirely true. The grace of God grants you salvation so that you are in Christ. That becomes your legitimate ground for receiving every other thing. The moment the saving grace is administered to you, what is the assignment of the saving grace? It helps you believe the gospel. Without the saving grace at work in your life, you cannot believe the gospel. The saving grace helps you to, to believe the gospel. And then it is responsible for the impartation of Zoe, God's life. From that time onwards, the level of grace that is at work in you is called the enabling grace. The grace that empowers you. The energy is supernatural, but the doing is still you. So, I pick up my Bible by the Spirit of God and I begin to study. Ordinarily, I should not find anything. Ordinarily speaking, I should not see anything that culminates to revelation. Except that I'm not just reading it in the flesh. What does it mean to read in the flesh? By your efforts. Only engaging your sensory perceptions. Now whilst I am reading, the Holy Ghost. You see that now? He comes and breathes upon me by that grace he has given me. And suddenly, I just turn to a scripture. I just feel like going online to type something and you find one scripture then you see a 19 minute message or a 21 minute message you had no business going there but there was a grace it was responding to your participatory you see that now you were participating with that grace that 19 minutes vi video leads you to a link leads you to a website now you have found truth and you kneel down there crying how did these people know that this is what i was looking for grace God knows that the call upon your life will require stretching and mentorship and discipline. And so whilst you are praying and say, God, show me mercy, all of a sudden you feel led to go to the market. But why should I go to the market after the rain? Whilst you are in that market, then you will see a poster. That poster leads you to a crusade that leads you to a church that leads you to the answer to your prayer. That is grace. It was grace moving you all the way, but you cooperated with that grace. That's why you are seeing the potential. You would have ignored it and the grace will still remain there. Listen, did you know in 2 Kings chapter 4, the oil had the ability to solve that woman's problem but the oil could not multiply itself on its own there was something she had to do to release the potential of that oil what was her assignment increase the vessel when she came to the prophet the prophet said you are a prophet's wife no this is not how god works you are sure you are a prophet's wife yes sir my husband is late he said no there must be something in your house what do you have said nothing he said no Check. i said oh oil and the oil was listening to the conversation and said for years i have been here you don't know what would have happened to your life you never would have tasted of poverty if you had recognized that i am here waiting for your participation as soon as the prophet gave her counsel he said i know where the problem is you have been waiting for the oil to find its way to fill vessels you go and borrow vessel don't borrow oil but go and borrow vessel 
whatever it will take you you can plead with your neighbor help me don't be ashamed go and outsource these things and when she came listen carefully listen he said now that you have it shut your door and begin to pour and the oil said now that you have done your part watch and see that this was no ordinary oil so God gives you your finances and in your dreams you're having visions of you thriving and yet you are going down because the grace has been waiting but there is no knowledge to know what to do with that grace you see that faith is not acting faith is acting based on the conditions tied to the promise there is always a condition you don't choose what to do you find out what you are supposed to do Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord the Bible says to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day he says that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth every time God speaks the grace to make what he said come to pass starts hovering around the vicinity where that word was spoken but the grace keeps waiting there who can believe that word and find out the condition that makes for the activation of that grace listen when it was time for Jesus to come upon the earth there was an engracing that came by the Holy Spirit waiting for that virgin in this case Mary if Mary refused and said thank you for all this your story uh, Gabriel go back to heaven and tell God I'm not stupid he would have respected her will and the word alongside the grace would have looked for another person but here's what Mary said be it unto me according to your word the moment that happened the grace called the power of the highest that overshadows how shall these things be she asks an honest question i'm willing to cooperate but can a woman give birth without a man and gabriel said leave the rest just understand your own part is your own part is to agree god is not a demon he will not force a baby inside your womb And she said be it unto me the same way I hope you know that she had a responsibility of carrying that baby for nine months and can I tell you honestly I believe that she went through the normal things women go through when they are pregnant don't you think she was smiling every day carrying a heavy Jesus no there were times she felt this Jesus I they told me you are the king of kings you are inside my stomach I am tired but her will kept playing the role when it was time she would have refused and say you are not coming out you will know now that you are inside my stomach she had to cooperate now I, I, are, we, are we together now yes why didn't Jesus just jump out one morning and say thank you I was only waiting to be nine months he had to subscribe to the process of delivery when she gave birth. Why am I teaching you this? Please place value on what I'm teaching you. By the privilege of God's grace, this man standing before you, I'm not in ignorance over what I'm saying. I understand this thing. Many believers continue to live defeated lives in this kingdom because they do not understand the character of this enabling grace the effort the empowerment does not come from you but the action of obedience comes from you and until that action is taken the grace remains futile so God speaks to you and tells you you are going to be a CEO you will build a foundation that will go around the globe the moment you believe him listen carefully the grace starts hanging around your vicinity but it doesn't mean anything is built you will keep seeing visions till you get old if you remain like that the day you now say listen the day you now say I believe let me start making efforts let me go and buy a book on building a business you are now cooperating with that grace a book that ordinarily you shouldn't have understood 
he will empower your mind and you will start understanding and whilst you are reading you will find a phone number you will come for koinonia like this and that grace will shift you to sit down near somebody who has a foundation and then you will see something written so 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 foundation and you say wow this is amazing you run a foundation you say i've been running this for 26 years and the holy spirit will say you see now that is the person i wanted you to come to meet now you partner with that person what's grace at work and the person says okay i will call someone in uk to help you a connection is coming it is not your wisdom that's why at the end of it when you stand in front of that edifice if they ask you how did it happen you will say grace because the dynamics but i'm telling you if you sat down at home there you will be very surprised that that grace will not work look at me there are many many people who have not taken advantage of this grace there are many men and women of God who want to rise to positions of influence. They want to be great. They want to carry power. But they just say, in Jesus' name, I won't be small. And they are surprised that they remain small as if God did not hear them. Let me tell you what the problem is. Here is the problem. You do not understand that this grace is activated through knowledge that leads to obedience and it is at the point of your obedience that the potential of that grace is released. It is at the point of obedience. Listen to me. Faith is not saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. You can start by saying homologio, confession, repeat as you have heard, but it should not stop there. So, come Dave. God tells this man, I want to lift you as a worshiper and take you to the nations of the earth. Whether it comes by prophecy or it comes by a scripture that is found. He can decide to say, God, you have given me a word. I'm going to the nations and he will sit down there. The day he goes to get a guitar or a keyboard, he is now participating with that grace. Are you seeing now? You go to the market as you are saving. Heaven is watching you. He buys a guitar, whether he can play it or not. Buys a keyboard. And the moment you do that, you have shown God that you are interested. He will now lead you to the person who will teach you. You see, you see him walking with you. I believe that God has called me to serve his purposes in the capacity that I serve. And I thank God for it. But sitting down to fold my arms and say the grace of God is at work in my life, I will be surprised till tomorrow. Let me show you a scripture. <sighs> Grant us grace, O oh Lord. Grant us grace. Grant us wisdom. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. I want us to read it as loud as we can when we see it. 1 Corinthians 15, media help us, verse 10. Everyone, please read if you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus. Ready? One to read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop. 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 How do we become in this kingdom? By the grace of God. For by the grace of God, I am this politician that I am. For by the grace of God, I am this man of God that I am. By the grace of God, I am this CEO, this billionaire. By the grace of God, I am this that I am. But here is this. He says, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Stop. Hmm. So we're, we're examining three things now. The first is that the summary is that it is grace. But hey, so that you don't carry this confusion, hold on. Let me explain to you. That grace can be wasted. Let me show you how to waste it. To sit down and fold your arms, believing that everything is all right. 
is called making the grace of God. Please keep the scripture there in vain. How did I maximize that grace? Next expression. Everyone read. One to read. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Stop. Don't rush. Don't rush. So number one, I am what I am by the grace of God. Number two, the grace came upon me, but the grace did not meet ignorance. The grace met me laboring, the labor dimension of faith. The grace met me looking around for a shop. The grace met me learning how to start the business. The grace came upon me and I did not sit down. You are going to start a school. The grace met me going around Abuja and understudying schools as proof that I believe what God said. God told me I will become a grace man of God. The grace met you going to men of God who represent your future and listening and learning. He says, I labored more than you all. The higher the tenacity of your participatory corporation, the higher the grace walks and speaks in your life. Grace is not a license for laziness. Hear me, believers. Grace is not a license for laziness. Grace is a system of advantage that we labor circumspectly because we are empowered by the Spirit. It takes effort to pray. It takes effort to study the word. It takes the audacity of faith to remain in the presence of failure and continue because God said so. The Bible says when you find yourself participating that way, then grace can speak for you. Are we together? It says, yet not I, but the grace of God. That means it was not by my energy. In as much as you found me as Paul praying, in as much as you found me studying, in as much as you found me preaching the gospel, regardless the persecution, there was an energizing within me that was more than me. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. I beg you and I beseech you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, to understand what I am teaching you. Otherwise, your Christian experience will be so frustrated. Apostle, ah, God has shown you grace. You are right. But please explain to me what you mean. If you mean that I sat down quietly, grace does not work like that. The grace that saves is loitering around here. But there are people, if you die now without Jesus, you are going straight to hell. Bishop David Oyedepo will say, any Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There must always be something. Now, let me tell you what it means to walk in the flesh. To walk in the flesh means to depend on your effort. To walk in the flesh means to believe that it is absolutely because of what you have done. You do not need God. It is because of my human connection, my wisdom. It is because of this. Uh -uh. The compassion of the Father was at the mercy of the sacrifice of Jesus. If Jesus did not endure, listen to me. When the nails hit the hand of Jesus, he didn't keep quiet and say, finish it, let me die. I'm the Savior. He felt the pain. Let me show you how. And met the sacrifice of his son. That's what produced grace. Love and a participatory effort. There are many of us looking at me. The grace of God keeps hovering around you bringing open doors that an inaccurate spiritual understanding continues to close let me tell you what many of us are doing this illusion that we have one day go better is a slang that we use in nigerian parts of africa to mean one day arbitrarily without any effort or contribution on your own part things will change is a joke joke multiplied God has called me to be a visionary politician. 
obtain grace from God and sit in your office in the night. Begin to strategize how to rise to that position. As you are strategizing, the Spirit of God is seeing your diligence and the engracing of God is coming to empower you. Hear me? Some of you need to politely go back home and call your family and say, I now find out why we keep praying and doors keep closing. Because there is something to do to rise. There are people who God will speak to and say, tomorrow you will be a director of an institute there. But the director requires you have at least a master's or a PhD or become a professor. If you obtain grace and go to school, you are participating with that grace to rise to that position of influence. It will not come and meet you at that state because that industry requires that degree of qualification. So training, diligence, studies, knowledge are all our participatory efforts to make good the grace of God. Let me submit to you, and I say this sincerely by the God of my salvation. Every night, including today, as tired as I am, when I just returned from Lagos, you know that? I've been to Abel Kuta, from Abel Kuta, the men's conference, Foursquare, to Lagos, and back straight here. And after this, there will be people to see, and after all, it doesn't matter what time, as a principle and as a discipline, I must listen to this message this night myself before I sleep. Don't covet people's crowns until you find out the sacrifice that those crowns are standing on. Oh, you are just lucky. It's just God's grace. Business people, hear me. This may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I know I will prosper. Oil and gas. I know I will prosper. Banking. God showed me. You are right. But believe me. Remaining at that state will only frustrate you and bring reproach to your life. These signs shall follow them. Follow means you are moving. Follow means you are taking steps. The grace of God to empower Esther to receive favor was there. But if Esther sat down, she would not find favor with the king. She said, you know what? I need to see this king. My people are about to die. I believe I'm favored. So I'm going to see him. If I perish, I perish. Listen. Now, I'm not encouraging you to be a hustler. That thing we call hustle, blindly trying to make things work. Don't do that. But have you noticed that people who don't give up never end up in shame for some reason? Have you seen people like that? They may not even be very serious believers. As soon as one door closes, they have no time to mourn. They force another one to open. They are losing their job. They grieve for two hours and they are up with their CV again. They have an e-version. They have their bag with the, 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 the CV. Any version you want, they are prepared. There are people like that. Are you into real estate? They will say yes. In two nights, they will read about real estate more than people who have been in it in 10 years because they will not let that opportunity go. Sooner or later, my brothers and sisters, you will be surprised to find out that something will work. I'm not just marketing flesh. I'm teaching you how the grace of God works. Hear me. There are many of you for a long time God has shown you that there are mantles. There are anointings. You've had dreams. You've had visions. Let me see what you are doing as proof that you believe what God showed you. For many of us, this is what we are doing. We are folding our arms. Oh, one day the fathers will die and it will be our turn. What sort of thinking is that? Oh, I know, don't laugh at me. I know one day I will rise. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I know God will prosper me. Show me the books you bought in honor of that word. Show me the uncommon mentors you are pursuing in the area of finances. 
with proven results as proof that you believe you are a kingdom financier. Found out, respectfully speaking, that if the body of Christ does not learn the labor dimension of faith, we will continue to mock ourselves, jumping at confessions that will indefinitely remain in the realm of the spirit. Not inaccurate, but that lack of balance and completion is where our frustrations lie. Joshua, there is a grace for victory upon you, but it will not be without any effort from you. You are going to go round. You don't have the power to fight, but there must be a token of contribution from you. Get the priests. Go round. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. They won. It's like going around Abuja, I told you. Don't think it was just a small room they went around. Going around Jericho was hard work. They did it for seven days. And he said, now, on the last day that you want to see the biggest blessings, you will do what you have done every day on that day alone, seven times. Now, man, I release a grace upon you for wellness. But go and look for a river. Dirty. Bath there. Naaman was saying, what sort of thing? You are insulting my pedigree. Say, okay, you can remain with your leprosy. But if it is God, you want to see cure you, go and bath. Naaman dipped himself once, came out looking like a child playing in mud. He was not healed. Dipped himself again. Came out the second time. Even the sixth time, nothing happened. But when he went the seventh time, that grace in the water there. And as soon as he came out, the Bible says his skin was like that of a child. What of blind Bartimaeus? What of the man that did beautiful? Acts chapter 3, I believe. The Bible says it was the hour of prayer. Listen very carefully. The man was begging for arms. Peter and John went to pray. And then when they saw him, what do you want? I want arms. Silver and gold, he said, I have none but such as I have. There is a grace he gave us. I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The man remained on the ground there. Don't think he just jumped up. No, he remained on the ground there. Verse 7. Hear what Peter said. For as long as you are remaining there, this grace would not work. Let me help you. Hold my hands. And he moved him. The Bible says, and as he lifted him immediately, his feet and his ankle bone received strength. Not when he was sitting. At the instance of his participatory role, that grace came upon him. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. It will never happen sitting down. Rest does not mean lack of efforts. Rest means dependence on God. God's idea of rest does not mean leaving anything and sitting down there. No. Rest means that your dependence, the energizing and the empowerment. Remember when there were few automatic cars? Cars that use automatic gear. You have to put the manual gear, remember? From four, you come back to three, to two, one, and then four, three, two, one, and your hand is almost as if it's removing. But now you have an automatic gear system. But who holds the steering? There is a system that keeps changing gears. But you leave the steering and hold your hand and close your eyes. And almost immediately, you end your life. But by holding on to the steering, listen to me. The advantage of the automatic gear system is to give you more room to focus and to provide convenience. So people can drive while they are talking and they are just driving while they are talking. It would, not be, it would not be possible with the manual system just like that. This is how grace works. Grace does not drive the car for you. It helps you to engage the gear system so that whilst you hold it and it also empowers you and gives you the strength. 
my brothers and my sisters obtain grace from God today find out what you need to do about your destiny rise up knowing that I have the backing of heaven open fire towards your destiny and in one month you will do more than you have done in 10 years put together then you will come and stand here and when we say how did it happen you will say the grace of God and we will know what you are saying Apostle, I want to be anointed. God will anoint me, I know. is my God. You are right. But that's not how it works. There are keys to the anointing. When you sit down and you are learning and you are studying while others are sleeping, you are maximizing grace. When you are listening to uncommon mentors help you and show you the way it works, you are maximizing grace. Every participatory effort that you put, knowing that I'm not putting this effort in the flesh. I am maximizing grace. This is why there are certain people who continue to triumph from one level of victory to the other. Whereas there are many spectators who sit down and hope that things will happen. The grace of God. An enabler. A divine help. If I think I engage my mind but I don't have the power to give myself ideas. The grace can bring ideas while my mind like a womb receives them and births them. So if you ask me how did the idea come, I will say the grace of God. But the idea came and manifested because my mind was fruitful to it. When God sent me to this city by the grace of God and with every sense of humility, I knew that his grace and his name was there to back me. But if I sat down and I folded my arms and I know I, I, one day it will happen, don't worry. You will be blessed. Tomorrow would come and even next tomorrow and nothing would ever happen. But that effort in faith from one step to another step to another step, his grace leading you his grace guiding you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you I will see I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days Apostle, I don't know why I have favor but people run away from me You are right you have been wasting that grace because you have not studied about relationships. The grace comes upon you but your ignorance as to know how to relate with the world of men keeps aborting and destroying that grace. The day you submit yourself to learning how to live in the world of men, you take advantage of that grace. Now you are ready to excel. Now you are ready to excel. A gentleman years ago who soon pray he heard my teaching I did a teaching on finances and when he listened to it he had a little fashion outfit just to sew and when he listened he was full of incompetence and was just giving all kinds of excuses he will measure you and sew clothes that twice your neck will enter inside it, carelessness and it didn't matter to him and when he listened, and in, in it I spoke about diligence, he made up his mind. He submitted himself for one year to learning and mastery. Receiving the blessings that came from God's servant week in, week out. At the end of it, listen very carefully. At the end of it, that gentleman 
grew to a level of competence he now his goal and his prayer was that one day he would also include me among his clients that he would be sowing for and he believed that he was called to do it but not that version of him and he worked on himself for one year and he sowed something then in Zaria he carried it and brought it many people used to sow and bring clothes as seeds and for some reason I was restless early in the morning I said let me check out what this guy did I'm, so I say, I'm sure all these people who have sown a lot of things God bless them but I may not be able to use it but when I saw his finishing I saw what he did I asked the protocol I said look for this guy let him see me before he leaves <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that was the beginning of open doors for that gentleman the rest is history history that is worth knowing but it is history Oh, David, it is true that one day you will kill Goliath. But if all you do is sit down in the bush staring at animals, Goliath will kill you as if God did not call you. Are we together? Yes, sir. When David was killing the bear, when David was killing the lion, the grace for leadership was supervising him, watching him. And when the moment came, he came and stood before Goliath and he said, I've rehearsed well. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, Goliath, be careful. You don't know what I've been doing preparing for this day. I am what I am by the grace of God. But the grace, I did not waste it in that I labored. I labored. In prayer, I labored in diligence. Nigerians, let's return to a point where we find dignity in labor and let's see it as part of faith as an as a participatory role to obtain and maximize grace arbitrarily leaving things to just walk like that arbitrarily waiting that one day we'll become exceptional politicians with no effort on our part exceptional businessmen doing business with nations exceptional men of God mentoring kings and speaking to nations just because God called you I apologize but that may never happen this is not how the kingdom works therefore you must obtain grace tonight to go back and say Lord what have you told me and what participatory role do I have to play in diligence while you are crying you still believe I'm a carrier of that grace and it's working for me God has called you into the music ministry sit down and pray in tongues until songs start coming from heaven when they come write them you are maximizing grace the first song you will sing it and like it alone don't be discouraged keep writing are we together you believe God has called you into business. You will go full of grace and be surprised that you will fail woefully. Don't worry. There is a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event. Give God glory for the lesson you are learning now. Because it will give you the audacity to mentor others tomorrow. So continue learning and going. And whilst you take that step from one connection to another connection, to one sermon, to one program, to one destiny helper, to one revelation, to one impartation, you find out that your life now begins to make sense. Something is adding up. Something is adding up. I desired certain levels of the anointing in my life. I saw in dreams and visions that I was walking in it. It would be a joke those days. To just gather people and say I wanted people for, on wheelchairs and crutches ah no but I knew and I said just sitting down to say God one day you will bless me uh -uh. I started looking for healing evangelists around the world dead and alive I began to study their convictions and their contemplations what did God tell them and let me tell you this by the privilege of God's grace we who God has helped to be successful a bit 
and we are still growing in the area of success, let's be sincere when we mentor people. Don't just arbitrarily tell them it's the grace of God like that. When it has to do with mentorship, open them to your scars. Let them know the dynamics, the way you participated with that grace to make it happen. Tell them you prayed for 10 hours. Not as an effort on your own, but that you were taking advantage of the grace. Tell them you fasted. Tell them there were times you were disappointed in meetings. Be open with them. Tell them you forgot your message one day. And that was when you knew that the spirit of revelation was real. Be sincere with them. For as long as we keep blaming people for our lives, including God. God, you are there. You are watching my life. You are watching my family. God is saying my love and my kindness is not in doubt. I have given you everything. He that did not spare his son. I didn't spare Jesus. Will I withhold anything from you? You are aborting, misusing, and abusing the grace of God. I keep enabling you and you do not act in keeping with the conditions that are required by scripture to make that grace come to pass. So from tonight, make up your mind that my life must command results. Make up your mind. It is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. Let me round up by saying this and then we pray. When the prodigal son left his father and went around, he was roaming around with pigs, eating from pigs. Here's what he said. I will arise. What did he want? He wanted to enjoy that grace again, that opportunity. It was a house with limitless abundance, but he left it and he began to deplete. He said, I will arise. I don't have the power to restore myself, but I have the power to meet my father. I can make efforts to meet my father. And as he was making that decision concurrently, his father said, let me meet my son. Let me keep going. Paradventure, I will meet my son somewhere. There was a meeting point. He did not meet him at his place of rest. And he did not meet him in the house. He met him at the place of obedience. It's a risk I'm taking. What if my father throws me away? It's a risk I'm taking. And while I'm going, I'm rehearsing what I will tell him. Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of the slaves, but at least let me make the efforts. I am going. If he drives me away, I will return back with honor. I'll say, God, at least you've seen that I've made efforts. When the father saw him, the first thing the father did was to embrace him and said, your obedience has spoken volumes. You don't need to tell me more. I already know the story. The fact that you understood and discerned enough to leave that point, not minding the shame. People look at him and say, this guy whose father was wealthy, what a useless boy, enduring the ridicule to keep moving was already enough. And um, the moment the father met him, the Bible says he put back that ring, that symbol of honor, sent him to the house, held a party for him. And while that was happening, the elder brother was now angry. And the elder brother said, so what about me? I have been in this house. And he said, you want to make the mistake of this person now? Everything I have is yours. It's just that you don't know what to do. All you needed to do was to ask me as your father. You do not have the consciousness of my fatherhood to request that I will give you a lamb. Will I not honor you for your obedience and your staying? There is nothing that God cannot do but fold in your arms to say, Lord, I know. There is nothing you can not do. It's true. But I'm showing you the dynamics of the administration of grace. Let's read that scripture again. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. We're wrapping up. 15, 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. 
Please help us, media. But by the grace of God, Joshua Selman, you are what you are. Everything you will ever be is a product of God's grace. You are right, but don't stop there. Paul did not stop there. He says, and his grace, which was given to me, already given, was not in vain. I participated with that grace in that I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit. It will only be with you if you are interested. It will only remain with you if you are ready to receive it. Anything God says you should receive, you can reject it. It does not end up in just confession. It does not end up in waiting for God to do. You have engraced me. Empower me, therefore, to take not steps that I want, steps that are required as demanded by the result I intend to see. Please rise up on yourself. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. Shines on me, shines on me. I'm everything with you. Shines on me, shines on me. It's your grace. Listen, whilst you're standing, I want you to begin to see with the eyes of your spirit the next level of your Christian experience, the next level of your business, the next level of your family, the next level of your finances. See it because in Christ is a possibility. See it because in Christ you have access. Your assignment is to turn access into experience. Your assignment is to partner with the grace of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make access become experience. You may have a billion dollars in your card, but if you do not know how to, re to use your ATM card or make withdrawals, you can sit down and be dying of hunger and thirst, whereas you have so much. This is how it is in the kingdom. I want you to see with the eyes of your spirit. You are in ministry. I would like you to see how limitless you can be in Christ. Not for the sake of gratifying the flesh. That you can do so much for his majesty. You are in business. You are a politician. I like you to see yourself becoming what God has said. There is no limit, I'm telling you, to what you can be. I believe God, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. The abundance of your grace. Hallelujah. 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 This is my philosophy. I walk with the consciousness that there is space for me in destiny. There is no devil in existence from any nation and any region that will edge you out of your space in destiny but just knowing it is there does not take you there it was sir isaac newton that stated his laws of motion in his study on mechanics and he stated one of the laws he said, everybody remains in a state of uniform motion or rest. It will remain there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. He was so right. He was so right. Nothing changes if action and effort is not put. 
your business will remain at the last level of your obedience your company will remain at the last level of your diligence your mind will remain at the last level of your study the anointing upon your life will remain at the last level of your press and sacrifice your prayer life will remain at the last level of your exercising your senses spiritually please hear me even if you are Esther while you wait for Ahasuerus use the oil don't sit back there Esther was not sitting every day the oil was coming upon her you may not have the money to start the company but go online and buy the books listen to teachings by people with results provable results you are trusting God for ministry ministry is grounded for you it is not growing you are a sincere person but nobody is placing a demand on the grace of God upon your life stop giving flimsy excuses around it is not tribe it is not region it's not where your church is located no where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather stop giving excuses it's because I am this that's why I'm not promoted I'm lifted in office take responsibility Lord there is something I have not done with the grace you gave me remember the wife of the son of the prophets that oil has been in your house for a long time the oil kept speaking since last year will you leave me like this businessman do you know what I can do do you know what the grace of God can do man of God do you know what the grace of God can do prophet apostle do you know what the grace of God can do the injection contains in it a liquid that goes into your system and corrects what is wrong but the injection will not bring itself into your system the doctor calls you designed in that liquid is the entire the, the injection has already been programmed to work in your body but are you willing to endure the pain there are injections that are painful and yet that's the price for the healing you are looking for so you compare the one minute pain to the years of misery and you can stand and say doctor I am willing and he gives you the pain you may feel the pain but you are not conscious of that injection you are conscious of what happens to you and as soon as it is administered two days three days you're running around like you were never sick or you can refuse and remain there and say I want drugs but the drugs are given to you you will have to go through the discipline of swallowing it per time required and whilst you are swallowing it complaining but you are still active the body does not care that you are complaining just keep doing what brings health and the body will be healthy can I tell you this brothers and sisters I do not promise you the grace of God and faith in God does not necessarily make all things easy it makes them possible I'm not going to promise you that just because the grace of God is upon your life you may not need to cry I'll be lying to you there are some of you the journey you are beginning from tonight it will be a journey of tears but while you cry don't stop while you weep don't stop was it not because they wanted to go to the other side help them please we're praying just help those under the anointing it says where we meet with you is too small let us go beyond the Jordan it was their instinct for increase that brought that guy in trouble I innocently wanted to fell a tree to build a bigger place alas master it was borrowed he said fine rest there is a grace for restoration but you have an effort point to me where it fell I'm not just going to bring it out just point it and he said well I may not have the power to make it float but prophet I can show you where it is and he threw a stick and he began to float are you ready to pray in one minute I like you to pray from the depth of your heart Lord the grace 
to begin to take radical actions of obedience towards my destiny radical actions of obedience as proof that I believe your grace and as proof that I am maximizing that grace please go ahead and pray radical actions of obedience obedience in study obedience in mentorship obedience in prayer obedience in speaking finding out the conditions that my results depend on and working in keeping with those conditions please pray there is a grace for speed there is a grace for performance there is a grace for influence and visibility there is a grace for signs and wonders there is a grace for leadership there is a grace for wealth and abundance believe me there is a grace for favor these graces are available but even if they come upon your life they don't produce results automatically they enable you to do they enable you to act they enable you to act they empower you please pray hallelujah last prayer point tonight second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 mighty god someone's life is changing second corinthians help us medium second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please read with me believers one two read and god is able to make stop God has an ability he can coordinate the grace for favor join it with the grace for wisdom join it with the grace for speed the grace for restoration bringing grace is not your assignment God is able to make all grace abound towards you and now when you partner with that grace through diligence and obedience you will always having all sufficiency in how many things by these results you will abound to every good work god supplies the grace you take advantage of the grace through faith and now that grace empowers you empowers your mind your body your spirit your will and pushes you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for the promise the condition that makes for the results that you seek and inevitably the bible says if you live like this you will see are you ready to pray father every grace that i need in this season every dimension of grace and if you know a particular dimension of grace that you are seeking passionately lift your voice and pray the bible says it comes from god God is able to make all grace abound towards you. The grace for prosperity, the grace for passion and hunger for the things of God. The grace for prayer and supplication, the grace for revelation, the grace for influence, the grace for signs and wonders, the grace for favor, attracting to your life helpers of destiny. All of these graces are for your taking but you must pray that god sends them and pray that you will maximize them lord i will not waste your grace through ignorance i will not waste your grace through idleness i will not waste your grace through carelessness i release my faith and i take advantage of that grace hallelujah praise the name of the lord 
before I speak over your life for tonight I want to invite very quickly I've, I've preached about grace there are people here scattered within this auditorium please no movement let's respect the altar call those outside all the overflows down to the basement and there are people following from nations continents territories you have heard the word the grace that saves right now is within reach but it will only profit you if you are able to take that step and stand as one who is in need of that grace the bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away i'm going to make an altar call for two groups of people very quickly number one those who are saying apostle i've given up i'm i'm tired of living my life my own way i want jesus i need him desperately and number two there are those who are saying i want restoration i want to rededicate my life if you are here i'm going to count one to three because of our time please boldly unashamedly i'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here remember that the grace is only activated when we take those steps of faith and instruction has been given by the spirit celebrate them as they come i begin to count now one two come to jesus the saving grace is working in your life no matter how far you have gone he can give you a new beginning come come to jesus koinonia celebrate them as they come this is the grace of god this is what the grace of god can do when we participate with that grace all those are the overflows just move to your projector screens following online be ready to make that prayer are you still clapping watch what the grace of god can do for as long as they are seated it will look like grace is not working but when you begin to take action then you see the grace work now i'm forever grateful that you have been faithful to me God, for your amazing grace i salute every one of you my dear brothers and sisters for making this noble decision just like i thought you have partnered with god's grace now you have done your own part by coming there's only one more step left the prayer of salvation to repeat after me then the giver of grace will bring you away his life and that life becomes yours at the instance of your faith demonstrated in and through your coming and your confession some of you are crying don't be afraid and don't be ashamed this is a family of faith we are recipients of God's grace are you ready to pray please lift your right hand before Jesus whose office grace is administered in this kingdom we never partake of grace outside of the office of the Christ he is the epicenter of grace I once was lost but now I'm was blind but now everyone here in front of me and those at the overflows the basement outside following online please repeat after me very loud and let it be from the depth of your heart knowing that Jesus is here and he's listening to you the grace that saves has brought you and is ready to administer salvation say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I believe in your word I believe in your grace tonight I have heard that your grace can save so I come to you just as I am I ask you to forgive my sins I ask you 
tonight to be my savior my lord and my king i declare that i am a recipient of eternal life i declare that i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness i declare that my sins are forgiven the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken from my life from today i go forward ever and backward never amen and hallelujah keep your hands lifted father the bible declares that whoever will come to him you will in no wise cast away these ones have come i pray by the authority of scripture i declare that your sins are forgiven from today even by the authority of scripture it says therefore if any man is in christ he's a new creature all things have gone behold all things become new i declare that you start afresh with the lord from today i declare that the power of satan sin hell and the grave is broken from your life you are members of the fold of faith blood washed recipients of eternal life i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit that in the name of jesus by the twofold ministry of the word and the spirit you will grow in grace in the name of jesus christ from tonight you are victorious you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray amen and amen Thank you and a big congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Now, I want you to follow the counselors. They are waving their hands and waving a placard. Please, all of you in concert, just follow them for a minute or two. They'll just appraise you on a few things, have your details, and you'll be back to your seat. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, whilst they are outside, I want to speak over your life. Now that you know what to do with grace, it is now profitable to speak those dimensions of graces as a priestly blessing over your life. So that when you receive it, you know how to run with it. In the name that is above all names, I declare every grace that you have seen at work in this house and you desire to work in your life, I declare over you, may that grace come upon you now. Receive the grace for extraordinary wisdom. The grace for revelation. The grace for influence and visibility. The grace for prayer. The grace for passion and encounters with God. The grace for abundance and prosperity. The grace for favor. May it come upon you. The grace that attracts the ministry of men, may that grace come upon you. By this grace, nothing dies in your hands. By this grace, rise from glory to glory. Hear me? May this grace bring strange ideas and strategies to your mind. That from tonight, as you walk out of any of these doors you walk conscious of the fact that i am full of god's grace never will you think you are empty again never will you think you are without support and assistance by this grace may god give jobs by this grace may god give children by this grace may god bring settlements by this grace, may God bring wealth and abundance. By this grace, may God bring liftings. By this grace, may God bring spiritual acceleration. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, as you take actions of faith, you will be surprised that between now and next week, it, it, you will want to come and testify in a hurry that doors just began to open. 
as you were acting on the world and can i pray for you everything that has fought the expression of god's grace upon your life whether it is human demonic or institutional i stand by the god of heaven and i declare this is the week it clears the way for you every red sea that stops you from advancing hear the word of the lord koinonia global go forward go forward by the grace of god go forward by the faith that activates grace go forward in the name of jesus christ And everything you need to do to cooperate with this grace that you are not aware of may the spirit of revelation bring that knowledge to you every step of obedience you need to take today tomorrow next tomorrow that will accelerate your results spiritually and otherwise may the knowledge on what to do come to you now for some of you like Daniel it will come as you understand by books receive it in jesus name for some of you the lord will send his angel to come and reveal to you like he did to daniel for some of you in dreams and visions like he showed peter god will reveal to you what to do but in any case when you find what to do the grace to do it receive it now hallelujah wave your hands and give jesus praise for tonight we bless you lord because you are holy we thank you because you are faithful let there be a performance from this understanding let our lives command fearful kingdom results to the glory of the name of the lord may we mentor nations by the results that come out of this understanding may they know jesus through our lives may they know jesus through our results in Jesus name I pray hallelujah now just one important announcement thank you for your patience one important announcement by next week we we are going to announce I know that there are several of you here who have been wanting to join the workforce you are here and there is a passion to join the workforce you would notice that we've delayed receiving new people because we were just starting in this city and we wanted to build that spiritual culture first before we receive new people so by next week when i come up before the message we're going to announce the departments that are open please open up your heart and for those who are outside of this nation just be patient by god's grace as god brings us to build teams around your region you can make yourself available we'll create a system and a structure to let you participate as soon as the pandemic eases off, we'll continue our global expansion program. So for now, please remain in prayer, remain in the study of the word. Go back and listen to this again. The teachings are all available on YouTube. Make sure you get it and then invite others to be part of this. Don't create controversy around. Knowledge should not create controversy. It's for your learning so that it brings transformation. You will act in honor to that transformation and then you will obtain results let's share the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen god bless you and see you on sunday
have a rescued my life. Oh, but you have a rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Our responses. Hallelujah. You're my
dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.